trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise and that is I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38 verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Glory to your name, O oh God. You are the only one who deserves to be exalted. There is no man who competes with you. There is no man who can take your place. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. You have made him a little lower than Elohim, crowned him with glory and virtue, set him over the works of your creation. Jesus, something supernatural about you, Jesus, something the voice as you're singing this song I'm seeing miracle jobs miracle jobs the Holy Spirit is ministering to me Releasing jobs for people, releasing jobs for families. I said the delay, the delay of employment is coming to an end for many people. The delay of employment.
Take it higher, guys. For you alone is worthy. For you alone is worthy. For you Are breaking, you are risen from the dead, and you are Lord. <laughs> Light is shining in the darkness. Jesus. I'm seeing something strange that will begin to happen in the spirit. People will start dancing in the spirit. This is what I see. It's a mystery. It's going to happen by the spirit. Literally, literally dancing in the spirit. It's an operation of the Holy Spirit is releasing tonight. He's doing a miracle in the midst of his people. Let's just flow with what the Holy Ghost is doing. The miracle service for next week has begun already. Dancing in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is moving people and influencing them. Influencing them by an ability that is greater. Shaboka Supra is Kalabariaga. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Forever you will be. A lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow. To worship you, forever you will be. Forever You're the Lamb of
your hands and just be quiet in his presence. Just lift your hands to the heavens. Everywhere inside and his glory is mighty in this place. Mm. Just lift your hands to his glory. Just lift your hands. Of your presence, we your temple. We give you reverence. Now arise from your throne. By our praise as we glory in your embrace. Let your power now feel. Lord, we wait on you. For you are that river that flows from Zion. Bring in healing. Bring in salvation. We have come tonight, O oh God, expecting you to bless us. We are not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. We will wait. Keep your hands lifted. For in your presence there's fullness of joy and now strength shall be restored as we wait upon. I will wait on the For in your presence there's fullness of joy and 
us pray will be restored for we wait upon the Lord yes we wait upon the Lord oh wait on him there is strength coming upon you we wait upon the Lord we wait upon the Lord we wait upon the Lord Lord, we wait on you. You are drawing strength from the throne. Don't you think you are wasting time at all? This is part of the meeting. Already he's doing miracles. He's touching people by his anointing. Touching people by his anointing. No man is able to respond to your situation. We're invoking an anointing that is greater than us. Power that is greater than us. I hear the Spirit say unto me, lay your burdens down. Lay your burdens down. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Lay your burdens down. The bills, the sickness, the frustrations. For I am able, said the Spirit of God. I am able, said the Spirit of God. Lay your burdens down. You have allowed your situation to overwhelm you. You have allowed your situations to be cloud your faith. I am still able. I am still able. Say the Spirit of God. I am still able. That's what the Lord is telling us tonight. I am able. You may not know how the miracle will come to pass, but I am able. I am able. That's what the Lord is saying. I'm moving ahead of you into that area of darkness. The Lord is giving people miracles, responding to your individual needs. I may not know what they are, but you came for koinonia. The God of heaven is meeting men at the point of their needs. I go before you. I go before you. I go before you. I'm seeing what looks like a cleaner. God is saying, I'm erasing your mistakes. That's what God is saying to someone. I'm erasing your mistakes. I'm erasing your past. I'm giving you a new beginning. I'm giving you a new beginning. A new beginning. Yes, we someone I'm restoring your dreams and visions that's what God is saying I'm restoring I'm restoring your dreams those encounters you used to have those supernatural encounters you stopped writing for a long time because the visitation ceased tonight the oil is being opened and released onto you it's like a fragrance you are receiving it it's coming upon your life that's what the spirit is saying it's time to come back to the secret place. It's time to come back to the secret place. For someone, the Lord is ministering. You used to spend time with me two hours every night. But you stopped. You stopped. There were all kinds of distractions. But the Lord is saying, I'm still waiting for you. In that place of encounter, I'm still waiting for you to show you great things. 
to show you great things to show you great things the Lord is speaking to a man here you are an engineer and he's saying do not give up I'm about to step into your life do not give up the Lord gave you a word by January that he will honor you but as it is you've not seen anything no projects no work but the Lord is saying I should tell you he's stepping in even in this glory stepping in in this glory there are a number of ladies here you really used to hear God with clarity but all kinds of distractions came into your life and sincerely for a long time you cannot say you really had God with a clear direction but the Lord is bringing a restoration right now that's what is happening the hearing ears God is opening your ears once again to start hearing the voice of the Spirit with clarity I'm seeing I'm seeing green grasses that's what I'm seeing the Lord is bringing freshness to your spiritual life that life of stillness stillness carrying yesterday's grace yesterday's glory the Lord is replacing it with something new and fresh thank you Jesus for you alone will do these things and glorify yourself You have come tonight to experience His grace. The anointing of the Spirit is strong. Let's just flow with what God is doing. Lord, let no burden remain. Let no burden remain. Let no burden remain. According to your promises, I can stand secure. Would you carve upon my heart this truth that sets me free? According to your word, oh Lord, be it unto me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, says the works that I do shall also do greater works than this shall be. Spirit of God, we thank you for your presence. is speaking a word to someone and he's saying the harassment comes to stop it comes to full stop tonight the harassment in dreams that spirit that comes to you to oppress you the harassment stops the harassment stops by the anointing of the Holy Spirit the harassment stops the harassment stops But thou, oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, oh Lord, art a shield for me. I 
Please, everyone, just lay your right hand on your tummy. This is the instruction God is giving. Let's just act. Lay your right hand on your tummy. Please, no instruments. Everything, just stop. Let's, let's just obey what the Lord is saying. Just lay your right hand on your tummy. Don't mind me. This is what the Holy Ghost is telling me. Now, there are many of you who are going to be receiving strange graces for the next level supernatural direction it will come like fire inside and outside right now oh god confirm your word with power across this building and in every of the overflows right now just keep your hands on your stomach miracles shabakataya let it leave the heavens and come to the earth miracles miracles everywhere Outside, there is a mighty angelic walk. It's like an impregnation that is happening outside. Strange signs outside. In every one of the overflows. Strange signs of the spirit. Strange signs. There are two ladies at my back in the worship team. I see the power of God touching you right now. Strange signs. That fire from your innermost being. From your innermost being right now. The Lord is doing that miracle across the entire auditorium. He's touching people. Let's just let him do what he's doing. Because this is the answer to your prayer. This is why you have prayed. You can't stand it. Lord, let it leave your throne. Let it not be restrained in the heavens until it steps into the destinies of your people. This is what they have prayed for. They have fasted for it. They have prayed. They have fasted. They have prayed. They have fasted. Then let it come, O oh God. Let it come, oh God. The grace that can open strange doors. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Shaka Barakosia. Just the guitar. Just play minors. Just on the guitar. Go ahead. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the bass guitar. Just keep your hands on your stomach. The Lord is doing a miracle. The Lord is saying, He's stepping into the finances of families. This is what I'm hearing. That's why He told me, Let the guitar play because He wants to speak. The Lord is doing miracles in finance, in the finances of many families right now. I'm hearing favor, financial favor. I'm releasing financial favor. You will hear the testimony. It will start in your life. It will flow to your family. That's what the Lord is saying. Where are they, oh God? Touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them. Bring performance to your word. Bring creation to your word. Financial miracles financial miracles the lord is saying it's time to move to the next level he's speaking to families it's time to move financially there is a mantle coming i'm seeing it like a dew it's like the dew of heaven if it comes upon you it's your family he's talking about if it comes upon you expect it don't just receive expect a testimony i don't know how it will happen but if you are affected by this prophetic word then your family is under the influence of a financial anointing Lord, spare not your hands. Stretch it from the heavens. 
stretch it from the heavens release financial miracles that's what the lord is saying for many of you it will do you like a dream you wouldn't even know how it will happen supernatural connections strategic alliances by the spirit of god meeting the people that matter meeting the people that matter financial saviors financial helpers joseph safari matthias rising for you rising for you this is what you have prayed for it is important that you receive testimonies you receive miracles there is a lady you traveled from the south like a, one of the Yoruba countries you came all the way from the south and you came asking the Lord to visit your family right now the miracle is already beginning for your family such an invasion of the Spirit of God it's bringing light to every area of darkness There is a brother the lord is speaking he's saying leave the wedding date at september don't move it leave it there i will make it happen it will be by my spirit the lord is speaking to a brother leave the wedding date at september leave it there don't change it because of finances i will move and go ahead of you i will move and go ahead of you i will move and go ahead of you The Lord is speaking to a woman here, not a young lady, a woman. The dream that I gave you July 2012 is about to come to pass. The dream that I gave you July 2012, July 2012 is coming to pass speedily. July 2012, that dream that I gave you July 2012 is coming to pass. A miracle is coming for a gentleman by the name Musa. Musa, a gentleman by the name Musa. The Lord is bringing a miracle for him right now. God is healing a lady of appendicitis. Appendicitis, that's what, that's what it is. You don't know, but you've been having severe pain. Severe pain is appendicitis. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. There is a man here you've been trusting god for promotion this is five years five years the lord says in the next three months your letter will arrive in the next three months and you will testify pay attention to the prophetic words there is grace to make them come to pass Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated if you can. Just leave those under the anointing. Just sit if you can. God is doing strange things tonight. There are three ladies this will come upon supernatural laughter in a very strange way they can't control it i will worship you forever love you forever this god is too don't just bring people out like that please this is a prophetic experience they'll never be able to stop the laughter it's not it's not about what they want to do is a is a message i will worship you forever love you forever because i prophesy to all three of you 
let your family step into a season of laughter right now i release that anointing even as you are laughing i release it in the name of jesus there is authority in your laughter i declare by that authority in the name that is above all names in the name that is above all names the lord is bringing miracles to people glorify yourself oh god in the name of jesus listen we do business in this kingdom on the strength of mysteries mysteries are secret codes of operation he said the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants there is a way to make things happen in the spirit madam the witchcraft in your family dies forever it leaves your family right now i command that spirit you take your hands of her life in the name of jesus christ james 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 you are a visitor who is that is there someone like that james there's someone called james he's a visitor this is your first time of coming run the lord wants to use you and bring a miracle to your family but look at me god needs to save you huh there are many things wrong with your life many things huh you are a bad boy god is going to change your entire life i'm not i'm not i'm not insulting you but there will be a miracle for you right now because the hand of god is upon your life but there is a spirit that is destroying you a spirit that is destroying you i cast that spirit right now let it live your life forever in the name of jesus christ father you can use anybody and anything you brought james out the name of jesus let me talk to one more lady helene i'm hearing a name helene is there someone with that name helene come who came with you came alone you came alone why am I seeing a man standing near you? Listen. There is a spirit tormenting you. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. This has stopped her life. Tied everything. I'm seeing everything under chains. There is a man standing. And this man is shouting and saying he's married to you. I curse you by the God of heaven. Hold my hands name of Jesus that spirit lives your life forever I bring you complete deliverance in the name of Jesus are you married that's it for your marriage this is the reason why you're not married. are you hearing what I'm saying because this has been your prayer this has been your desire anything you start and I need to pray for you because your stomach is swelling it's even embarrassing you you are thinking it's because you are eating too much if I don't pray for you they will tell you something like fibroid is growing and we have to pray we curse it it dies a natural death and goes back there that person that comes to oppress you in your dream never returns to you again forever in the name of jesus and may doors open for you strangely in the name of jesus christ our time is gone um there are three things three keys three mysteries that can invoke the manifested presence of God the manifest presence of God in the life of a man in a ministry I wanted to start a series on throne room encounters 
what the Lord asked me to talk about this. Number one is obedience. We are going to be fast because I want us to pray. God still wants to visit people. My sister, come. This lady. Um, where the usher is standing, that gentleman, right? One, two, three. Just your rope. The third lady. Come. No, not you. The lady at your back. Come. Yes, she's the one. You. Come, please. Please save our time. Um, the Lord says I should prophesy to you that the rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone. The rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone. You may look at yourself and think you are nobody. You may look at yourself and think you are a weak person. This is what has been destroying you you compare yourself with people you have been crying simply because you are not doing well you are not doing well in anything and then people have been insulting you and this has made you to feel so bad while you were sitting there the lord opened my eyes and i saw a lot of misery you see the lady crying you see let me tell you there are all kinds of people seated in this place tonight when you see people just sitting you may not know what is destroying them eating them up because the destiny that i see is far different from what i see right now this is already putting a lot of pressure you love god but you know this sense of inferiority is killing you and eating you up the lord is saying i should tell you the rejected stone will later become the chief cornerstone lord jesus i pray for this dear lady there is nobody you cannot change there is nobody you cannot touch. May the God that I serve visit you. May he give you a new beginning. I cut you away from bad friends and bad influences that make you try to do things to belong. No. Leave them this night. Don't have anything to do with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam. Madam. You are asking the Lord to talk to me that I should minister to you. I'm hearing your prayer. Come. You are praying and your prayer is coming to my ears. You are bowing your head and you are saying, Oh God, please let this man talk to me. What is the relationship between you and the woman sitting close to you? She's my elder sister. Do I know? Come. Because I'm seeing that the miracle is not just for you alone, but God is doing something for the family. Please stand up. Kai, this woman has suffered seriously. I look at this woman, I'm seeing pains. You are a very kind woman, but what is this thing that makes you in trouble? All sorts of trouble. Where is your husband? What's he doing? Madam, God needs to visit three things. That's what the Lord is showing me. Number one is your finances. Things are dying in your family. That thing your husband is doing, before he collects his salary, he's already owing there is serious trouble you have cried about this thing it's even causing trouble for you people at home right yes, now sir. is that true yes sir. your husband is in in fact sometimes he looks as if you know you have to look at yourself and say am i irritating this man yes, because sir. of the way he's behaving you are even yes. suspecting that maybe he's having an affair with somebody yes, else sir. the lord is ending this confusion for you because you are a kind woman there is a spirit responsible for your tragedy this woman is a very kind woman but i'm seeing bad luck everywhere you go that's what i'm seeing there's nothing you do that works see let me tell you the power of god look at this family crying you know sometimes people think we just do these things because we are emotional and we're wasting time did you know there are people as they are sitting down there that's their last opportunity they are saying they will now go to a prophet or somebody and he will tell them bring hundred thousand bring two hundred thousand remove your clothes let me bath you let me do this and then after that one you add all kinds of things because i'm looking at this woman and i'm seeing a lot of struggle the same spirit causing you pain is what wants to destroy her life and destroy what is supposed to be an, a source of joy for her marriage huh we have to pray 
Did you come alone? They are crying. I think for official assignment. Yesterday she told me about your story. I supposed to go back to Abuja. Yeah, my. Three for my son. It's a drug addict. My first son, 23 kids. A drug addict. Where is he? He's in Abuja. Suleiman. It's not just that this boy is a drug addict. Ah, I don't like what I'm seeing, no. Because they want to convert this boy. That's what I'm saying. This is, this is not a nice thing. We are going to pray. Truly this woman has suffered. But things are going to change. Your husband needs a miracle. A big miracle. Do you know this woman is so kind. She's not even concerned about herself. She would rather not have clothes than for her children. This is the kind of woman I'm seeing in the spirit. I sold my car to pay school fees. I sold my car to pay my son's. Can you work on this technical or Shadrach? Are you doing something wrong? I sold my car to pay my son's school Your fees. Your car? To pay whose school fees? My son's school fees. The boy that is. Oh, yes. look at this. Where is he? See, let me tell you may god make this never be your testimony you don't know what it means the child you are waiting for trusting that god will use him to wipe your tears and the devil just hijacks his destiny now no car and the son is not even serious i need to pray for you because you have not slept very well in days madam i'm looking at your sister and i'm seeing that you have not slept i'm hearing you people saying what what is wrong with our family especially the girls the ladies in your family that's what you you are the one who is saying that thing you are telling her i'm seeing you people in a discussion and you you are telling her what is wrong with our family all the ladies they are virtuous they love god but nothing good comes out of it and there are families like this seated looking at me is that true madam yes sir because i'm hearing a conversation and she's asking you we are saying, seven, seven ladies, seven how many of you seven of us how who is doing well among you nobody you see what i'm saying seven ladies nobody is doing well and all of them are serious and nice virtuous ladies they either get married to foolish men yes. or get married to all kinds of things yes, sir. where is number four who is number four among them it's her mother huh? her mother there is a miracle that god wants to give her because the lord said that she's number four in the order is visiting her my dear please calm down what happened to your mother in her marriage the devil wants to bring it to happen to you we are going to destroy it. their father is not with her mother that's what i'm saying we are going to destroy it because this one so i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Bring that lady who shouted, there is a miracle God wants to give her family. Is it okay if I just continue ministering, please? I know I'm supposed to share something, but the, the thing God is doing now, God wants to talk to people. Let's, let's just let him solve serious problems here. Yeah. It's your time for breakthrough stand up you come i came all the way an angel of the lord was walking and said i should follow him and he brought me to your place come it's time for god to wipe your tears you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you Thank you. you get the glory. You get the glory. Hallelujah. We don't kill, but I'm seeing someone's uncle dying. 
I'm seeing that man in a shrine concocting something and saying all the ladies would not marry but I'm seeing like thunder striking him that's what the Lord is showing. help that lady right now I'm seeing it happen I announce our victory if I be a servant of the Lord right now may the earth open and swallow them I speak it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost any man sitting on what belongs to you any man sitting on your glory Jimmy, God is bringing a miracle for your sister. I'm seeing your sister. I'm seeing your face and I'm seeing her still flash. Is she here? Who is? Come. I didn't even know that she's here. I'm seeing the Lord is saying he's bringing a miracle for her. I'm seeing somebody clean footprints on the ground. That's what I'm seeing. You are moving and you are leaving footprints. And the footprints, I see flies all around it. But I'm seeing someone cleaning, cleaning it. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. He says, I should tell you, behold, I will do a new thing. God will begin a strange walk in your life. And it's going to surprise you. A strange walk. You have a desire for God. You sincerely love God. And let me tell you, the desire is not a waste. The same way your brother is loving God and being passionate. Look at me. It's not about perfection. It's about sincerity of motive. The, the journey to self-perfection is unnecessary and exhausting. What God requires is a sincere desire for me. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing that will wipe the past of this lady's life, the past that eats you I curse it by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus may your conscience be purged by the blood may the water of the word cleanse you and may grace be supplied unto you for a new dimension for a new level I release this grace upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let's go to Exodus 40 33 please Exodus 40 33 we really have to be fast <sighs> Exodus 40 33 Moses wanted to once again experience the manifested presence of God but he could not see that presence find expression until his obedience was perfected complete let me tell you something half obedience is not obedience at all half obedience you must obey to the latter god is very meticulous about his instructions are we together now and so god kept watching as they attempted building it and then 40 verse 33 he says and he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up for the hanging of the court gate right read the last sentence if you have open there it says so moses finished the work he finished building according to pattern obeyed as instructed to the latter and something happened in the next verse 34 it says then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle the word glory is the Hebrew word kabod. The essence, the fullness, the expression of all that makes a man what he is. Or whatever deity. So when we say the glory of God, the effulgence of his person. Right? Fill the temple, 35. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of congregation. Because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. When you are obedient, you will see the glory of the Lord in your life. In most remarkable ways. You don't have to be a pastor to see the glory of God. You don't have to be a man of God. Once you are kingdom compliant, the sacrifice of complying with the principles of the kingdom, then you are authorized to experience the glory. You see, you may not be able to see all of the clouds and all of that. 
but the glory of god is made manifest in miracles strange testimonies dramatic operations of the hands of god that leaves you baffled everyone who sees you knows that this is by the finger of god that's somebody's testimony tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ grace to obey grace to obey you must cry for it complete obedience gives you access access to experiencing the glory number two the second key to experiencing the manifestation of god's glory is prayer prayer matthew chapter 7 17 matthew 17 verse 1 to 8 matthew 17 Matthew 17 verse 1 to 8 this was the encounter that we call the transfiguration of Jesus we apologize for the inability of the media to switch for now please just bear with us I'm sure they are working on it and after six days listen Jesus taketh Peter James and John his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain privately there are certain things in the kingdom that are not just for christians listen i know we have this idea that yes god doesn't want to hide anything from us but you see the dispensation of spiritual realities is according to the degree to which the spirit of god can trust you there are certain trust levels if you have not attained certain deep mysteries of the kingdom cannot be committed to you the bible says that he was the one who called all the disciples but he took three and he says there is something i want to show you privately what did he show them privately a mystery the bible says and was transfigured before them listen he went to the place of prayer and that transfiguration began and the bible says his face did shine like the sun and his raiment was as white as the light and behold there appeared unto them moses and elijah talking with him listen verse 4 he says then then answered peter and said unto jesus lord it is good for us to be here if thou wilt let us make this and that and that and that you know and then he was just speaking and so on and so forth and then the bible says verse 5 while he yet spoke Jesus was communicating with them in the place of prayer and he was trying to make an arrangement and the Bible says behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and then behold a voice spoke out of the cloud and said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him verse 6 he says and when the disciples heard it they fell on their face and they were much terrified it says and jesus came and touched them and said arise and be not afraid and when they had lifted up their eyes they saw no man except jesus only listen there is a dimension of the glory of god you will never experience until the ministry of prayer brings you there. you can do every bible study you know to do you can read every concordance takes and so on and so forth there is a decree of open heavens the manifestation of the glory of god upon a man's life that is a direct answer to the ministry of prayer are we together now he spake a parable luke 18 verse 1 unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to say it he spake a parable B by prayer I don't just mean oh god give me tea give me bread that's just, that's petition 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 give me tea give me bread that's petition hallelujah the kind of prayer i'm talking about is the type that is said in the book of james effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man you see let me tell you there is nothing in your life that can substitute for the absence of a healthy life of prayer no matter your word level 
it will show when a man does not have an altar that is alive an altar of prayer the first thing that disappears is discernment discernment is lack of discernment is spiritual blindness what lack of discernment is to the realm of the spirit that's what blindness is in the physical realm the moment a man is close to the impulses of the activities of the spirit there is no effectual prayer. so things happen around our lives and we we become victims we become um, um, victims of the effects of things that happen not the initiators of the faith the ministry of prayer it was on the strength of prayer that when satan spoke to peter jesus looked at him and said get thee behind me satan and he said peter satan desired by discernment he desired to sift you like wheat he said but i have what what was the antidote prayed for you not discuss with him i prayed for you peter something is wrong with your discernment you didn't even know when the holy ghost was speaking to you you just said i am the christ and the spirit took over your voice you didn't even know the difference he said i'll pray for you because that's what is wrong the absence of a healthy altar of prayer it has numbed your discerning ability there are many believers here and it's sad if you're a leader here and you're a pastor believe me if you don't pray you will your discernment will be dark and blocked one of the greatest advantage of working in the spirit is access to feeling the impulses of the environment of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a real realm like the physical realm right when you get born again and you are filled with the holy ghost as you begin to pray the first thing that happens to you is an activation of the ability to interact with the atmosphere of the spirit it may start in dreams it may start in visions it could be dramatic but then your spirit listen to my message spiritual perception your impulses of the spirit right they be, you begin to pick signals there is danger uh -uh. god does not want me to go here he doesn't have to give you a reason lack of prayer has got a lot of catastrophe not all these things you just stroll around 30 minutes one hour you just throw back it's called the effectual fervent you don't have time to fervent you have passion to it and as far as your passion can drive you that's the validity of the prayer time it's not about saying i'll pray for 10 minutes or five hours or eight hours you will pray until the nothing of the spirit releases you you are praying to burn things in the spirit not for the formality of religion the problem with the prayer ministry is that most people pray to feel spiritual and then maybe to intimidate themselves their little group so if i pray for 30 minutes you add 30 minutes to it and it makes you look spiritual no when you are a spiritual man there is always an object that drives you to the prayer part time and as you pray you keep checking the rewards of your victory as against the impulse and stop only when that victory is established this is where we miss it when elijah prayed was it just according to desire he wanted an effect first time he prayed only god knows how long that was he said go and check there was no result what did he do again we stop we stop because it's two hours we use early time to gauge certain things you see the 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 things we are contending against sometimes will require time and certain dynamics of spiritual operation to produce victory so if you have this idea that because you are you want to pray you just sense god wants to speak to you and then you pray for 30 minutes or one hour and you feel i am okay you see you are using a wrong timing the same way if you pray for eight hours just blindly and religiously and think because you pray for eight hours it means you are making contact with the spirit no sir you pray according to the guidance of the spirit the spirit of god instructs you he navigates you your prayer there is a connection between a burden in the spirit and something in the realm of the spirit and you pray until there is a release when the servant came and said i've seen the sign elijah stopped at once it is let me just continue since i've gone so far he stopped at once because prayer has a purpose once the purpose is achieved stop and move on in action 
Brothers and sisters, hear me. Especially for those who are workers, those who are students, those who are maybe business people and so on and so forth. The, the propensity for negligence in the place of prayer is very high. Are we together? As a student, you have lecture in the morning. Sometimes marathon lectures. You are finishing in the evening, you may have fellowship or you have certain things. The truth is when you calculate it, you find out that there's no time for quality prayer. Are we together now? You see, the most important thing about prayer is not necessarily praying eight, eight hours every day. At your level, you cannot pray eight hours every day. You will be irresponsible in your activity. The key is to maintain the fire and set periodic times when you compensate for the absence of the secret place. At least I expect everybody once a week you should be able to have some time when you can dedicate certain things. And let me tell you, in my life, one of the biggest secrets of my prayer life is the mystery of night prayers. I can tell you this. Ask any man that prays. The night time is when men, men gain crowns in the spirit. Why do you think people die in the night when they sleep? Why do you think people's sicknesses and diseases amplify in the night? There are many mysteries we don't know in the body of Christ. Maximize your night time, especially for many of us here because we are young. Establish things in the night. Don't crash into trouble and then you are wondering what to do in the day. The daytime is for manifestation. We settle realities in the night. Believe me, it will not rob you of sleep. It's just a little sacrifice of prayer that will bring you tremendous power. I hear God clearly at night. There are times I go outside and I just sit down. Everyone has slept. I just sit down outside and I'm meditating. Many of us have been cheated in the night time. The devil has studied your spiritual life and he has seen your area of vulnerability. Let me tell you something. Do you know there is something called slumber? I hope you know it's a spirit. Uncontrolled passion for sleep. You are passionate about sleep. I'm not just talking of resting. You know, you are tired and you are resting. Some of us is a spirit. No matter how you plan to pray, once it's night, even if you slept from morning till that time, you are just going to Thank the Lord, Lord, I bless you and snore your way to your morning. It's a spirit. If no one has told you, something is wrong with your destiny. Many politicians and businessmen, their time of meeting is in the night. Witches and wizards and demons that do all kinds of things. You take advantage of the mysteries in the spirit. There are times and seasons that grant you access by grace. You see, if you do not know these things, if you do not know these things, you will, you will miss out on a lot of things. Why is it called the Lord's Supper? Not the Lord's Breakfast. Not the Lord's Lunch. Why was it done in the night? Because there was no time? No. It was a mystery. I pray for every dead prayer life here. Or every prayer life that is need driven. Father, I'm coming before you now. The other time you gave me 5,000. Listen, if you really want to be strong and gain power and open the heavens, your prayer must be effectual. The key to effectual prayer is praying in tongues. There is a place for praying in your understanding. But I'm telling you, if you want to make an effect, pray in the Spirit. For no man knows what is in the heart of a man said the spirit that is in that man so no man knows what is in the heart of god you don't just go around grumbling just praying sing one or two choruses which is good the key to prayer i'm telling you effectual prayer that builds you is praying in tongues spend time praying in tongues not just in english or in your language no there is a place for that pray in the spirit and please if you are here and you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit correctly and seriously. I want you to know that there is something you are missing. Now I know, I don't want to go into all the details, our time is gone. We come from different churches, different ministries. I know we have different ideas.
my goal of teaching this tonight is not to create controversy but i love you too much not to tell you the truth if you are not filled with the holy spirit i don't know what you have been taught about it we have teachings already there you can listen to it this is there is a need for you to say lord i need to upgrade it's not just about praying blah, 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 making noise no this is a spiritual language the bible calls it an instrument that helps our infirmities what is our infirmity the bible says we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but the spirit makes intercession are we together don't say i just love the lord i'm, I'm okay I'm, I'm fine honestly i don't want to complicate my spiritual life it's already complicated this world we live is very complicated the ministry of prayer is what will straighten that crooked path he said elijah was a man of like passion like us he said he prayed earnestly that there would be no rain for a space of three and a half years elijah locked the heavens and put the key in his pocket he said the, the heavens will not be open except at my word not the word of any man of god that is sealed us these are men who took territories they 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 taught the heavens open one time he was up the mountain some enemies came you see that a man of prayer let me tell you if you're a man of prayer and any man goes to any shrine to concoct nonsense oh come on ask the prophets of Baal what happened to them the Bible says they kept calling on Baal for money Elijah said maybe he's sleeping waking you know why many Christians are weak in the body of Christ we love comfort to a fault and and we men of god are the ones who have destroyed people i believe in prosperity you know that i believe in the blessings of god but brothers and sisters let me tell you there is the sacrifice you must make for your destiny the sacrifice of prayer it's not all about having cities there are giants on every mountain are you hearing what i'm telling you there are giants on every mountain you're a pastor you are not praying you just share a revelation and you are happy you believe you come on stage no prayer no periodic fasting no strength you just want to speak and let things happen do you think god is a herbalist no god is not a herbalist please if you're a pastor here pay attention to what i'm telling you except you want to joke around with your members or you are ready for empty pews the generation we are in now members are not ready to waste their time for nonsense again once they come and sit down and you are wasting their time they will get up and they will leave no matter how you pray pour one gallon of oil on your head we need power it takes prayer to access open heavens are we together we add drama in churches for two hours and then when he's about to pray they say everybody bow your head as if we are mourning somebody just recites a prayer request for 10 minutes Say, okay thank you jesus for answering prayer and people get up and that's why we keep getting weaker and weaker no discernment spiritual things are flying around your territory nobody has the eyes to see and the ears to hear until it happens and everybody is confused may that be, not be your testimony in the name of jesus christ three enemies of prayer number one excess food excess food there is a name for it is called gluttony believe me if you take what i'm telling you your prayer life will step into another dimension am i saying you should not eat no not at all excess food gluttony there is a connection between food and the flesh number two excess sleep excess sleep the second enemy of prayer excess sleep number three the third enemy of prayer worry 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 is a spirit that's why the first assignment of worry is to bring you to a point of depression have you seen people with worry i don't mean people who are just thinking real worry they can't even talk uh -uh, are you doing well they just keep quiet because satan's goal is to shut your mouth he knows that there is power that is released if you open your mouth he says my heart is indicting a good matter yea i speak of excellent things he said my tongue is the pen of a ready writer psalms 45 1 and 2 my tongue is the pen 
of a ready hiker. Men ought always to pray. Brothers and sisters, pray. Turn and tell your neighbor, pray. Say, pray again. Say, pray again. Say, pray in the night. Yeah, pray in the night. You will, you will command tremendous power. There were times in Zaria, most of the people here will tell you, night time was the time people built strength. Ah, come on. You would see all kinds of strategies of prayer. Strategies. But, well, God is helping us. I'm just, I'm just challenging you, brothers and sisters, please hear me. If you are married, husband and wife, pray. A praying husband and wife is a staying husband and wife. A lazy husband and wife is a divorced family already. It's a matter of time. Because every spirit, the devil will move across families. And he will come like the angel of death, pass through every city. But when he got to Goshen, he came. He saw that he saw that there was a fortification. What fortification have you put around your life? John chapter 1, when Satan went before God, what happened? He met a man who made oblations for his children. It was a similitude of prayer. And Satan said, I came, but I could not access him. Have you not built an hedge around him? Satan is a prayerless Christian. He's a powerless Christian. Beauty and glory of God comes upon your life when you pray. Don't put prayer as an instrument of crashing. This is the problem. Some of us pray, but the entire scope of our prayer is God give me. Are you not seeing? Give me. And we try to manipulate God and bend his hand. That's why he gave me the blessings of praying in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Stretch in the spirit. You can put worship songs, your earphone, or something to create the atmosphere. Pray in the spirit. Even if you cannot pray in the night, early hours of the morning, why not? Put a little worship song. Charge your spirit. Sing one or two songs. Blast every mountain before you in tongues. And walk out in the day. And you become a living miracle. You are walking with the heavens open. And what looks miraculous for others becomes your atmosphere. Men will sit down and plot evil. You will walk on it as if Satan does not exist. Those are the people who will not be affected by the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence. There are people who will be affected. You are a Christian, but you will still be affected. But there are those who are immune. I pity the native doctor that calls my name in any charm. It's not just that it, if all that happens is that it does not work, I'm still cheated. For calling my name, that charm and the native doctor was born to ashes. When Elijah finished proving his point, he said, no, 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 if we stop here, that's not all. Go and meet those prophets, kill every one of them as a testament that you don't try God. The devil has mocked some of our lives and we are just watching, groaning for counseling and discussing. Some of you this night, you will lock your door and say, I'm offering my phone. Lord, it must change. Families don't pray. They discuss, they call people to come and gossip, but they never pray. We meet people for counseling. We go and meet Babalao. We go and meet all kinds of people, but we never pray. We pray as a last resort. Oh God, I come to you. You too, you have seen what we have done. We have made all of our efforts, whereas we should come before God. There was a king in the Bible who died because he didn't seek God. It was a taboo to seek other things when you have God. We depend on uncles if i talk to my uncle he will do this let me tell you never take action on anything until you have prayed about it especially major decisions in your life no matter how convinced you are pray because there is a way that cement right onto a man but the bible says the end thereof i can't tell you how many things i wanted to do plans i had physically speaking they look fabulous but when i went to the place of prayer there are many things we wanted to do as a ministry. I would discuss in our leaders meeting. Oh, we are going to do A and B. I will go back to God. If it's silent, I come back. They know already. The moment I say we'll do a thing and I'm silent about it, they know God has. Do you have the courage to keep quiet if God is silent? Do you have the courage? 
to stand still if God is not moving. If the cloud did not move, they did not move. If it stood still, stand still. The true benefits of prayer, not this thing people do just for spirituality, just to show that I'm a man of prayer. People bend and deceive themselves to show they are praying. That's not a sign of prayer. That's nonsense. Those are the kinds of things that make God look like an idiot. Prayer is serious business and it commands victory. Say, I receive grace to pray. Say it again. I receive grace to pray. Grace to pray. Take charge of your atmosphere. There are giants on every mountain. If they didn't spare Jesus, they will not spare you. I guarantee you. Make no mistake. Do not think they will not come for your business or your family or your children. You have the testimony of our dear mother. Do not think they will, they will, the devil will attack anything that can be attacked. If it does not happen, it's coming. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord. The Bible says after the temptation, he left Jesus for a season. For a season. He came through Peter. Jesus detected him. He said, ah, you caught me. The next time he came through Judas, the son of perdition. Jesus allowed it to be so that scriptures will be fulfilled. Not because he was not ready to overcome. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your throne and I'll hear from the earth. My altar is calling you, oh God. My prayer is calling you. Oh God, oh speak from the heavens and I'll hear you from the earth. Oh speak from your throne and I'll hear you from the earth. For my altar is calling you, oh God, my secret place. Is calling you, oh God, take my praise, oh God, take my praise. Do you have an altar that calls him? Do you have a secret place that calls him? When there are men who seek your flesh and they are invoking upon altars, is there an altar that answers? Or are you just loitering around hoping that life will work? Men have died because they did not have altars. Let me tell you, please play no games. I'm not scaring you. Lady, don't think you will just get married because you are beautiful. Take back your priestly robe tonight and go back to the place of prayer. There is an effectual fervent prayer. There are many brothers. You will not just be established because you are a graduate. There are giants on every mountain. A man can look at you with his sad spirit and vow that you will not move forward. It takes prayer to move mountains. By the grace of God, this ministry is moving as if the devil does not exist. It's not because the devil does not want to destroy this ministry. There is a mystery. There are, there are mysteries like cornerstones that we have found and put around the boundaries of this ministry. Number three, the third key to carrying and releasing the glory and the manifest presence of God is worship. The last scripture and then we'll continue next week during the miracle service. Second Chronicles chapter 5, we'll read verse 13 and 14, just two verses. Very interesting, this was the dedication of the temple. When Solomon had built the temple, there was a sacrifice upon the altar and he was about to dedicate the temple. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 13 and 14. It came to pass, listen, as the trumpeters and singers were what? As one, making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with trumpets, a 
and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord saying for his good for his mercy endure forever that what then the house was filled with the the cloud filled the whole house right the next verse so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house listen in 2005 I conducted a personal research Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence I was obsessed I wanted to know what the secret was how will a man just step into a place and the atmosphere just changes physically as if he carries a dimension of glory I wanted to find out because I saw this happen in the life of the Jews I saw this happen to people who were associated to the Jews like Benihim and so on and so forth they would just sing and worship and before you know it the glory will fill the place oh I wish we had time we'll take it from here next week but brothers and sisters worship is a mystery that compels the presence of God to be made manifest worship is a mystery the third key to activating the manifested presence of God here and now in a place worship it's not enough to just be obedient as powerful as prayer is there is a dimension many of us are missing in our spiritual life worship the Bible says in Psalm 100 it says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving then it says and his courts with praise he said come before him with singing the protocol to meeting him is song singing come before him it has nothing to do with the quality of your voice it has nothing to do with your music proficiency although that's an added advantage however you cannot give an excuse that because I cannot sing I cannot raise songs and incense of worship unto God next week I'm going to be teaching us the protocol of acceptable worship not every kind of worship is acceptable the proof that your worship is acceptable is that his glory responds to it I'll share with us the mystery of Cain and Abel a type of the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh the Bible says both of them they came and they offered sacrifices of worship right and Abel gave of his firstlings and his fatlings and Cain just gave up the vegetables and all of that and then the Bible says how that the sacrifice of Abel rose up to the heavens and that of Cain did not rise up and Cain killed Abel when God met Cain he said where is you know where is Abel he said am I my brother's keeper and then he began to challenge him and he said that if he did what was right paraphrasing would his sacrifice not be accepted sacrifice of worship is not just about singing there is a protocol that leads to acceptable worship the first key to acceptable worship is found in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 I beseech thee brethren by the message of God that ye offer your bodies that's the first key that ye offer your bodies not your songs not your voice not your offering not your oblations not the lifting up of your hands like the morning sacrifice above and beyond that there is a protocol there is a system that must precede your songs he says your body must become a prototype of what you want to offer with your lips and then Hebrews 13 gives us a picture of the fact that worship and praise is sacrificial so the first is there must be death we we'll explain that the second is that it must be a sacrifice it says let us offer unto God the sacrifice of praise which are the calves of our lips he calls your sacrifice the calf of your lips in the similitude of that which was done in ancient times in the temple he says when you worship God it is in the similitude of the killing of bulls and rams he says offer the calves of your lips 
a sacrifice that is acceptable unto him hallelujah that's why we took our time to worship and as we began to worship God began to respond and touch people the spirit of prophecy came upon us and we began to minister three short things that I've given you tonight that control the manifestation of God's glory you can't argue it they are not they are not they are not opinions they are the spiritual formula for accessing the glory of God number one obedience number two a, a consistent life of effectual prayer hallelujah number three the incense of worship oh let my praise rise before you the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice these are all mysteries the mystery of the lifting up of hands the mystery of repetition as you sing you see a lot of people sing it the Jews used to sing songs one line they would sing it for hours just like you see many people in many religions it's, it's not an enchantment there is something they do the mystery of repetition you see that happen in the songs that the psalmist wrote their response will be for him. hallelujah thank you praise the lord for he is good and his mercies endure forever or for his mercy shall endure ever faithful ever sure and so he will say a lot of things and then they will keep responding listen they didn't write songs as musicians they wrote songs as spiritual men they didn't have that skill to compose songs it was as it was delivered to them it was delivered in a particular way that if they sang it it will make god respond in a particular way for instance that formula you are good and your mercy endures forever you know i've studied it i found out that every time the nation of israel wanted deliverance that was the song they sang it had to be that line they invoked the goodness and the mercy of god two things that we quote every sunday they are following us and we never see it because we don't believe them the goodness of god and the mercy of god it was the goodness of god that passed before moses i will let my goodness a dimension of my glory called my goodness pass. thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done you see that so the holy spirit helps us to finish what jesus christ started jesus is still walking in the earth he is the head he has the body we are his hands his feet and so on and so forth okay so we stopped at the name i told you the name is not jesus remember that was a shocker for last week. The name is not Jesus. I told you in Bible days, they didn't know anything as Jesus. The name was Jesus. You see that? The Hebrew was Jehoshua. That was it. Our Savior. That's where you get the word Joshua. That's the Hebrew version of Jesus. In Mexico, there are many people. There are footballers called Jesus. There are all kinds of people comedians nasty unbelievers called jesus so it's not j-e-s-u-s -S. philippians chapter 2 the bible says god has given him a name an identity an office the office is not jesus i told you the office is lord l-o-r-d that's the name that was given to him until he was exalted he was not lord experientially this is why as great as jesus was in the earth realm his power did not work everywhere. There were certain places he prohibited people. He said, don't go there. Even when he sent the 70, he said, just go only to the Lordship of Israel because they were a covenant people. Remember when he healed the woman who was bound, he said, this woman being a daughter of Abraham, that means according to the Abrahamic blessing, indeed shall all the families be blessed. So through faithful Abraham, she qualifies 
Although Jesus had not died, but she qualifies through the lineage of Abraham to be blessed. The Gentiles were not part of that blessing. Are you getting my point? So now when he resurrected, the Bible now tells us Christ has redeemed all of us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every man that hangs upon the tree, that's Galatians 3, that the blessings of Abraham was the blessing of Abraham, not cows, not goats. The blessings of Abraham is justification by faith that grants you access to receive what the Bible calls the blessing, and that's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, weapons of victory were supposed to continue from there. Um, but tonight, I want to just jump and move to the next topic, commanding victory. This is our last teaching service for the year. We we'll, we'll still deal, there are many, there's the power of the name, there is the power of the blood. Hallelujah. There is the power of unity, there is the power of praise. These are the spiritual arsenals that have been given. For us to maintain victory, we must explore them. I just want us to have something because next week is miracle service. And so we will not have time to do any long teaching. So commanding victory, spiritual laws and rules of engagement. We'll just touch on that next year by the grace of God. We'll have time to consider the blood. Because the revelation of the blood is very powerful. Remember our miracle service for October? Exodus 11 verse 1. Yet one plague will I bring upon Pharaoh. And upon the nation of Egypt. After that he will let you go. So nine plagues. Pharaoh refused to let them go. But there was a mystery plague. When it was released. Pharaoh let them go by force. Hallelujah. The power of the blood. We will explain about the blood. Because there is a law in the spirit. Whenever you kill a man. His blood is permitted to speak against you. It's a law. Are you getting my point? You see why our villages are full of curses. You know how many innocent people they killed and buried and did all kinds of things? And many of us just got up in the middle of history and we are just receiving whiplashes we cannot account for. Because you came from wherever. And other people say, just, just assume it's not there. It's there. Look at it in your life. It's there. People are not getting married. People are dying. So, no, I convinced myself it's not there. This thing is not working. Faith is not stupidity. Hallelujah. Hmm. So I'll tell you the mystery of the blood. Because blood in the realm of the spirit has a voice and it speaks in levels. That's why a herbalist can judge your case and say this kind of case, go and bring a goat. Can't be chicken, no way. Go and bring a goat. You see that? Blood speaks. The blood of Abel spoke. That's not the only blood that has been speaking. I will show you when we talk about the mystery of the blood. How that, remember... In the Bible, when Joshua had a covenant with certain people who lied to them. That they were from a far country. And he entered a covenant only to find out that they were deceived. The covenant was that they would not kill them. They would not touch any one of them. Is that true? Fast forward. Later on, the Bible tells us that Saul, the son of Kish, came and during his reign, they killed those people. And the earth began to react. People started dying in Israel. And God didn't do anything about it. They went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said, uh-uh, you have broken something. Covenant. This covenant thing, people trivialize. I will explain it to you. Do you love me? Yes. Promise you will never leave me. I promise. Bring your hand. And you just cut it. You are putting it. You say, I can't. Because of love, I will just drink it. See, people do careless and very ridiculous things. In the name of love, emotion, affection. Hmm. Even God did not do anything about it. Listen to me. Do you know when they went to inquire of God? You know what God told them? We'll study it. I'm just giving you a preview. God told his covenant people to go and meet their enemies to find out what the penalty will be. It's in your Bible. And they went and met them. Do you know what they said? They said, bring the seven sons of Saul that we may slay all of them. And God said, you had them. People kept dying. Is it not in your Bible? Saul had to carry his seven children. They slew them one by one by one. When they slew the seventh one, everything stopped. You live in a world that is governed by principles. The Bible says it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why you can fast and pray over certain things. And the day you are rounding up the fasting, Satan comes to mock you on that thing again. Somebody has been pressing you. You say, I will engage. 
you prayed for 21 days on the 21st day you are saying thank you Jesus you fell asleep that they came again and bastardized your 21 days of suffering because he said I will give you keys not a key keys 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 principles hallelujah thank you Jesus right so let's let's get to our teaching for tonight commanding victory let me do a quick review of something I explained the last time let me have two people please any two people Maman, come, Sam, come, or any of it. Yeah. Okay, don't worry. One here, one here. I told us that there are two dimensions to understanding the kingdom. The first dimension is what? The person of Jesus. Everybody say the person of Jesus. Now, understanding the person of Jesus is what brings you into intimacy. You understand his nature. You understand his character. Are you getting my point? The second dimension is understanding the principles of the kingdom. Say after me, the principles of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for establishing your victory and keeping Satan where he belongs. So, that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ does not mean things will work for you automatically. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. We'll go there shortly. It says, when you have those keys... You will bind and cast. The bind and casting is not necessarily saying I bind or I cast. Uh -uh. There is something you do that equates binding. There is something you do that equates casting. Are you getting my point? Remember Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says, it shall come to pass in that day. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do and observe all that I commanded this day. It says, you shall be exalted on high above all nations and this blessing shall come, follow you and overtake you. And then it begins to list them. Do and observe. Do, not think, not wish, not be emotional. Do and observe. Many believers, listen to me, many believers have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's true. They've given their hearts to the Lord. Are you following me now? They are saved. If they die, they are going to heaven. But they may never be able to walk in the victory of the kingdom because they do not understand the principles of the kingdom. Are you getting me? Now, there are certain unbelievers who have denied the person of Jesus Christ. But whether they agree or not, they are embracing the principles of the kingdom. And you see, they are taming life as if Satan does not exist. Are you getting me? So, this is the mistake we have in our churches. Especially soul winning churches. We just call the people, when I say soul winning, I mean ministries that are inclined towards the evangelistic as an office. Are you getting my point now? Every church should be a soul winning church. Now, they get people born again and just leave them at the door of the kingdom and say, keep growing. They say, so what do we do? And I say, just continue. Are you not seeing us? All through, that's what happened. Just continue. And the people do not, they, they don't know what to do. They get sick, they get broke. They, they become failures. Nothing works in their life. Eventually, they die miserable deaths and then that's the end of it. But there is more to the kingdom. When you get born again and the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he doesn't come to make you a Pentecostal. He comes to begin to initiate you to the revelation, the mindset, the principles, the ideologies of the kingdom. So that when you comprehend, when you understand and you can apply the principles of the kingdom, then you begin to see things work as the Bible says should work. And this is why we are here tonight. Are you getting my point? So you may know Jesus Christ, you may have a personal relationship, but to what degree do you understand the principles of the kingdom? It is a combination of these two that we call spiritual growth. Are you getting my point? Spiritual growth is first the degree to which you have conformed experientially to the image and the character of God. And the, Im the degree to which you now understand the structure of the kingdom. The Bible says, with all thy getting, get understanding. Bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are exploring the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah commanding victory let me now just talk briefly on discerning the, the presence of spirits please listen 
what I'm sharing is very powerful. I want you to listen. Many people have called innocent people witches. Some of us have called our mothers. You just look at your mother because there's a mark on her face like this. Say, you're a witch. No way. You are a witch. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You just see somebody who doesn't smile. Even when others are smiling, the guy is like, they are like that. His face is, what do you want him to do about it? It doesn't mean he's angry. Just say, ah, now wow, you don't celebrate people's victory. You, you must be a witch. How do you, wait, listen, this is very important. How do you discern? Oh, there are many things in my head to share. I've shared some, but I'm just putting them again. Let me just, let me just talk a bit about it. I feel the need. It's your desire that is pushing my spirit. See, there are different levels of the influence of Satan in the lives of people. I've taught that, but let me say it again. For those of us who do not understand, possession is only the highest of the dimensions, but there are others. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point now? The first dimension of the operation of Satan in the lives of people is called deception. Deception deception what is deception causing you to believe a lie causing you to err without knowing the bible says ye err not knowing the scripture hallelujah deception second is manipulation and control paul look at me apostle paul let me even put the apostle behind his name so that you know the person i'm talking about Paul, who was a great apostle, began to communicate a lamentation in Romans chapter 7. He said, with my spirit, I serve the Lord. But in my body, I see another law walking in my members. Have you read that? So that the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing it. And the things I do not want to do, I find myself doing it. He said, oh wretched man that I am. This is Paul speaking. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? He was communicating a lamentation. Elijah was a very angry man. You get that? It wasn't just because he called fire. Elijah was a temperous person theologically. You do anything, you will burn for it at once. There is no second chance, no consideration, no negotiation. You are going to pay the price for it. It was that same spirit that the disciples had. So when Jesus was walking with them, they said, ah, you mean these people are speaking? You don't know that this is our MOG. Let's command fire. And Jesus said, don't you know the spirit that you are of? So that a man is born again does not mean he cannot be influenced by demons. Are you getting my point? Please, if you understand this, your deliverance will start at once. I remember arguing with a lady who argued with me. I, I believe she came from... We thank God for what God is doing around the body of Christ and we celebrate the efforts of every man of God. We truly, truly do. But let me tell you something. This lady was, I, as soon as she entered for counseling, I saw a demon looking at me. I said, sister, you need help. Before I said anything, this lady started arguing. No, 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 no. I'm this in Christ. I said, I know, I know. I'm not arguing. Can I help? I know. I am this and that. Before you say Jack Robinson, she was hitting my fridge, scattering everywhere. In the end of it, I said, all right, you are free. May the Lord bless you. For almost three days, this lady was sending me text messages. What happened? What happened? This is not to make you mock men of God. Archbishop Idahosa said, you only criticize people if you can do two times what they have done once. So this is not an issue of criticism. This is an issue of rising higher. Are you getting the point? We will not criticize them, but we will not do any loyalty or solidarity to remain in that realm. We must rise higher. Even in heaven, he said, come up hither. There is still a higher realm. Praise the Lord. Goodness, will we cover this thing today? So it is possible to see that someone may be born again, but he's still influenced with demons. When somebody carries bought to us a brother, finish singing on on friday on after you finish singing then you now carry bottle and break it are you getting my point and say we'll do it today i don't care what it is go and tell apostle we'll do it let's tear ourselves into pieces listen 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 please uh, as you're laughing i appreciate the laughter but i want you to really understand i'm trying to communicate something very seriously it's not normal 
It's not normal. Please get this. Because do you know what the fruit of the spirit is? Do you believe the Bible? You believe the Bible. If you see an anomaly, it should tell you at every given time, every man is under the influence of some spirits. Either the spirit of God or another strange spirit. And every man manifests the spirit that is influencing him to the degree he has allowed to influence him. So it is possible for Cain and Abel to coexist in the same body. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to be at work in you to the degree to which you have permitted him. And another strange spirit will be working. Because it is not in the character of the spirit to usurp authority over a man. Demons do that. Are you getting my point? Please, do, do, are, are you getting me? Because I've seen a lot of people during miracle service, you are just standing singing. Praise Adonai. The next thing you just fall down. And at the end, you are embarrassed. You are the pastor of your church. I said it the other time. People say, ah, pastor, what happened? And the person is now embarrassed. Saying, forget. These guys, the way I looked at that man preaching, Kai, that thing he's using is not of God. <laughs> My mother is alive. Go and ask her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Three things biblically characterize the presence of demonic spirits in the lives of people. There are many things, but three things from the Bible. Number one, uncontrolled fear. Please write it. Very important. Many of you trivialize fear. I'm not talking of fear. If you take a little, I saw one of our little babies here. If you take that lady and off the light, she will cry. That's not the kind of fear I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fear that brings bondage. That is a spirit. Are you getting my point? Fear. Fear. God has not given us the spirit of. So fear is not just a phenomenon. It's the presence of a spirit. Every spirit reveals its atmosphere when it manifests. That's why when the spirit of Christ shows up in a place and there is no love, it was something else. You get my point? If at the end of this teaching, I leave you fearful, I used another spirit to speak to you. It doesn't matter whether I preach from the Bible or not. Every spirit should reveal the atmosphere and there is an atmosphere that characterizes this, the presence of God. Righteousness, it must be done according to kingdom principles. Peace, the word peace there is shalom and joy. You don't get joy, it's not the same thing as happiness. It's the Holy Spirit that gives men joy. Hallelujah. That's why you only rejoice in the Lord. Not in money. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Because you have the ability. Hallelujah. Fear. Everybody say fear. fear. Say in the name of Jesus. Fear. I refuse fear from my life. Fear. Let me explain what fear means to you. There are many of our family members that are afraid of taking steps. Afraid of getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Afraid of doing a lot of things. That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? The fear that stops you from tithing. Kai! God, you save 5,000, 500. How much is left? That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know that fear is more dangerous. Listen. One spirit of fear can keep a congregation like this in the same level for decades. Fear. Fear that stops you from taking the steps that will bring the blessings of the Lord. Are you getting my point? Fear. Fear to break out of your comfort zone. Fear to take giant kingdom steps. That one is a spirit. God has not given us that kind of spirit. But of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Number two, disobedience. Listen, look at me. Uncontrolled, helpless disobedience in the life of a man is a classic Bible proof that you need help. What is disobedience? The inability to comply. The inability to take advantage of the grace of God and comply with the instructions and the terms of the spirit. The terms of the kingdom. That, that inability... 
It's not just about refusing. Many people who disobey do not want to. Is that true? They don't want to. Go and meet somebody who smokes. When he has finished everything and just sits down, you say, ah, John, why now? Say, oh boy, me too, I've, I've tried. Disobedience is a spirit. I'm going to show you from scripture. Ephesians 2 verse 2. How many disobedient believers do we have? Ephesians 2 verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. In, in which in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in who? The sons of disobedience. When people walk in disobedience, perpetually, the extension of disobedience is what we call rebellion, stubbornness. All of these things are extensions of the manifestation of that spirit. So you tell the lady, sit down. Say, me. I must go out today. Have you seen people who all they want to know is the rule that has been set so that they will break it? They are like that. They just want to know, what did they say we should not do? They say, don't talk to these people. Say, today, even if it's this fence. You see them around secondary schools. They just put a rule. They say, from today, no jumping this fence. The guys will start looking at the person they know will break the rule. And you'll be laughing. He will put himself under pressure to disobey. It's a spirit. It's a spirit for God's sake. There are people whose head is as strong. You are talking to them. They are listening to you like this. Already they have disobeyed you before you finish talking. Will you do this? Yes. Will you sit down? Yes. As soon as you leave, they are doing some. It's a spirit. Many, please parents, listen. If you are a parent here, listen to me. This is the mystery behind the rebellion of many of our children. The protocol will bear me witness. Last week, a woman was tired of her child. I'm sure maybe she's here with the boy. Tired of her son and just carried the boy and said, let's go for counseling. When they entered, the woman sat down. She didn't waste time. No beating around the bush. This is the boy I brought. You know, look, when mothers get tired, fathers are logical. They won't take steps first. They want to look. How is my reputation going to be affected? Mothers say, let's go. When they sat down, it was in, in less than five minutes, this boy was free, but it was a spirit. Hallelujah. Please, are you getting this now? This is not supposed to make you hate people. It is the biblical revelation that can help you to love people. See, agape functions from the standpoint of a revelation. You must know something higher than somebody's stupidity to love him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not this teaching about agape. They just say, just love. No, you can't just love. If you are stealing my thing, why should I love you? Until I have a higher revelation that is greater than your act. So it gives me the impetus to love even when you do not deserve. Are you getting my point? So we put pressure on people in church. They say, just love. What is there? Are you the first person they stole your thing? Ha. The person is saying, do you know the pain I'm having right say just love. It's like that. It works for everybody. It's not like that. I'm telling you this night. Love is a function of a revelation. That's why the Bible says it has heights. It has depth. It has dimensions. There is a revelation that when you have, you can love even when people do not merit it. And they will look at you and say, ah, ah, come. Why is Steve still loving this person? And you know that you are functioning from a light. That is higher than that which people see. It was on account of that. That Jesus looked at the people who were killing him. And said father forgive them. For they know not what they do. Look at the other two thieves that were hanging. What did they say? Same cross. What did they say? The other one even turned to Jesus. Said now wow. We are here. You are here. On the cross. Still not taking responsibility on the cross. He was on the cross. He stole. They caught two of them. They said, this night we are going to crucify two of you. Agreed, agreed. Now they are on the cross and he's blaming Jesus. Praise God. Disobedience. Everybody lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. The workings of disobedience. 
lives my life from today. See, you do not know how powerful the word of God is until your obedience is complete. Are you getting me? Our disobedience is what makes it look like God is not able to help us. Please believe what I'm saying. Hmm. Number three. Classic manifestation of the presence of spirits. Anger or what we call rage. Rage. Let's talk about this one moment. Anger. Everybody say anger. Please look at me. When you see someone or you have uncontrolled anger. There are people who can kill you when they are angry. Then later on say, ah, have you seen people like that? Some of our fathers especially. And I'll tell you why this anger thing is in our fathers. Because, you see, the beauty of any man's life is to make sure he's able to provide and protect his family. If you cannot provide and protect, you are not a man. Doesn't matter how many children you can give birth to. You get the point? The Bible gives us what, it says any man that cannot cater, not any man that cannot give birth to children, whether male or female, that's not the issue. Protection and provision is God's biblical litmus test to test genuine manhood. You see that? Protection, provision. That's why as a father, he models that. So if your life makes him look irresponsible, he's telling you there is a problem. Because any man that cannot cater for his family, the Bible says, is worse than an infidel. Are you getting my point now? So, anger. When you are frustrated by trying all the principles you know to try, and it's not bringing the result, and there are pressures. Do you know, statistically, some of you who are medical people will agree with me, there are more men with stroke and high blood pressure. Is that true? And blood-related diseases. When there is no school fees, when there is no this, the landlord is chasing the family and all of that away, and running everybody's running the children look at the mother because they are usually closer to the mother the mother now looks like the father the father is angry because he can't look at anybody now so he looks back at them in a way that will force them to shift their face oh yeah I heard what are you not seeing what we are doing frustration that's why it's better to listen to this thing before you get married believe me it's a big advantage big advantage are you following what i'm saying now Many of us just find out, oh, I'm old. Kai, time is going. I must marry. I give myself two months. God, if you are faithful, God is saying, calm down. Just listen to this series they are teaching you. God, I must. <laughs> See, Bishop is enjoying his marriage through, through knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, anger anger. Many people have refused to be promoted regardless of their fasting and prayer because of anger. Many relationships are scattered because of anger. One day the guy just looks at the lady, removes his belt, beats the living daylight out of her. And later on said, I just wanted to, to know that I was not myself. The lady said, that's the sign that I don't have any business. Who was there? I need to know the other person. You were not yourself? That means you cannot be yourself another day. I'm not doing. You see that? Or the lady sees the guy speaking and say, Hi, sweetheart, how are you? Maybe it's his younger sister. You just carry her seat. Turn your hand and say, I will lose and you will lose. These are spirits. Let me tell you how you know it's a spirit. At the end of it, the person regrets it. And sometimes the people are even shocked. They cannot believe that they are the ones who did what they did. Hallelujah. I remember one guy years ago, the mom cursed him and she told him something. She said, you will stop stealing the day rat. Stop stealing. <laughs> true story. True story. If it's just a story I'm forming, I will tell you. Bring that guy out of the prison. In two weeks, he's going back. <laughs> they were used to him. When he comes, they say, pass, just go. They're, nobody's asking any question. Because there was a spirit. Get the gravity of disobedience. Disobedience is not just refusing to comply to instruction. There is something that forces you to violate your own values. It's called the spirit of disobedience. Hallelujah. 
That's what can make a man of God collect bribe. They are forming a crusade and you say, ah, this, let's give bribe. And the person forgets he's a man of God. That's what can pressure somebody to do malpractice. After praying in tongues, he say, hi, this thing is too hot, too hot. Let me just, whoever can help me, I will talk to God later on. You see, it's the workings of, please get this very seriously. I used to trivialize disobedience till the day God opened my eyes. Because I will soon teach us that you are only ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Anger. How many of us have been suffering from anger? Anger. Deep rage. Anger. I remember a man who beat his son. Beat his son to an extent that wires entered the boy's body. Stripped the boy naked. Oh, tied him. And was just allowing these demons to vent anger. And you know, at such times, the mother cannot come. She wants to talk. She says, I will join you and this boy and tie two of you together. And show you I prayed your dowry in full. You see, all these kind of statements. Say, I refuse anger. See, if this is all you need to get to finish the year, it's enough. Are you getting me? Anger. Many of us, especially ladies, anger. Anger. You get angry at everything. Oh, it's pissing me off. Is this, this off. We have all kinds of satanic dictions that we have brought to explain this predicament. I'm telling you now, it's a spirit. Stop. You cannot be fighting with 20 people. The problem is you. If you don't humble yourself, why is it that everyone that comes around my life, we must fight? Something is wrong. Take responsibility tonight. And when it's time to pray, pray seriously. And say, enough is enough. Anger has cheated many of us. We have lost relationships. We have lost opportunities. There are many men of God that would have experienced increased thief. There are some people I would never invite to this pulpit even if their ministry is raising the dead. Because they would transfer all kinds of wrong spirits. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many, you see a beautiful brother, a sister, lovely lady, virtuous lady, but anger. Do you know what the Bible has to say about anger? It says it's better, how did he put it in the book of Proverbs? It's better to, to sleep. How many of you have tried sleeping on a roof? I've slept on speaker and amplifier, but I've not slept on a roof. To sleep on a roof than to stay with a woman who is full of rage. It's a terrible thing. Look at what the Bible used to compare that kind of spirit. Hallelujah. I know a woman, I was told that, I was told, not, not that I know her, I was told the story, that she took a knife and put red hot fire I tell the truth, God is my witness. And she took that thing and pressed the ears of her child. Say, you are stubborn. I will give you this mark so that forever. But did he change the child? That's what will make the child. When he becomes 13 years, his first assignment is to buy a gun. He will buy one small locally made pistol. This is what the hunters use. One day when the mother talks, you say, today, one of us will die. And you see, he will kill the mother. And people will not understand the story. They'll say such a kind woman in church, bar because she was giving. You see, the terrible thing about anger is that it does not show itself everywhere. So some people will never agree that this person is suffering from. How can you call this our elder, this loving man? When he comes up, they say such a humble man. This guy has such a character and then he will kneel down as they are even talking. But this is the man that is killing his wife at home. That's why when you go and meet the pastor and say, pastor, there is trouble. The pastor says a lie. You people are just being lousy. Anger is a spirit. It's a spirit. Are you getting my point? Other spirits, lust and the rest and all of this, they stem from these three things. Fear, disobedience, anger. That's why when you are casting out devils, notice every time they manifest, the first thing is anger. They just get angry. There is no joy with Satan, brothers and sisters. No joy at all. Forget that thing that musicians try to show you. That hey, it's a nice thing. Hell is this. They drop. It's, it's a lie. There is no joy. He cannot have it. Praise the Lord. 
John 14 verse 30. Let's look at one scripture. Are you getting blessed tonight? This, this teaching is a self-examination. Many of us, you are seeing that this is, the solu this is the problem. God is already showing you that this is it. Look at me. There is no man who has the spirit of love that will not have friends around him. Please, ladies, listen to me. When you find out, see, this is, this is what is responsible for many things. I know there are other factors, but there are, the Bible says, he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. And this, this thing is a strategy. It drives your destiny helpers away from you. I'm not just talking about relationship marriage. No, destiny helpers. This spirit of anger, this spirit of fear, this disobedience has cheated a lot of us. We have carried over seasons that should be seasons of breakthrough and liberty. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 verse 30. Hallelujah. Now, this is a big key. We are talking about the laws of the spirit now. Everybody say the laws of the spirit. Or say the laws of victory. Let me call them the laws of victory. We are talking of commanding victory. This is a law in the spirit. It says, I will no longer talk much with you. Can I have it in Amplified? Is it possible? amplified i will not talk with you much for the prince the evil genius the ruler of the world is coming and he has no what claim aha that means for everyone satan afflicts he claims there is a claim are you getting what jesus is saying this is jesus speaking now he said and he has no claim on me he has nothing in Come on with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Therefore, he has no power. This is a big key. Please, I want to show you laws of victory right now. That means every time Satan looks at you, he's finding something that looks at, like him in you. And if he finds it, it gives him access. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When... When demons oppress people, it's not to say the word of the Lord is not powerful. There must be something. And we're going to explore this. Say after me, the loss of victory. There must be something. And is that something we want to... There are three things. Three things that give Satan access, legal access over people. Number one, covenants. Please write it. Covenants. Are you getting blessed tonight? See, many of you, as you are hearing what I'm saying, I tell you, you will just be getting free at once. Because when you hear the word, the word is sent, it can heal and it can deliver. Say after me, covenant. Now, the word covenant is very important. Just leave that verse. Covenant is a very important word. I know we have bastardized it in the body of Christ. We just shout covenant, covenant. Let me tell you what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement. What did I call it? An agreement. A pact, a contract. Huh? Between two or more people. Based on clearly defined terms. A covenant, an agreement. Between two or more people. Whether one is higher than the other, that's not the issue. Are you getting me? Based on what? Clearly defined terms. Notice my definition. An agreement between two or more people. You can't enter a covenant with yourself. Clearly defined terms with grave consequences when there is any violation. This is a standard definition. Notice the word agreement. Notice the word what? Clearly defined terms. Notice the word consequences when it is violated. If you understand this, you will see the reason. Please look at me. While certain geographical territories in Nigeria still have certain strongholds. Everybody says strongholds. There are places in this country that the men are generally irresponsible. Geographically speaking, true or false. You may have been exempted by light, but it does not stop the fact that that's... Are you getting me? Where I come from, the people drink. They drink a lot. Are you getting me? I know, remember one time we went for crusade that they told us 
we went for a crusade in a certain place. And they say when they give birth to the baby, they dip alcohol and just touch it in his mouth small. And the guy gets up a drunkard all his life. He can go to Harvard and return back to Nigeria as a drunkard. Listen, I want you to understand covenants. So, watch this. Our forefathers, because when you understand the history of the continent of Africa, I hope you know that traditional religion was before the coming of Christianity. Do you agree with me? Praise God. May I announce to you that every tribe, every tongue, every nation in Nigeria was and is still involved in some level of witchcraft. Say amen. amen. So the issue of saying, you, you are from this place. Your people eat people as if you are innocent. Everybody's forefather was an idol worshiper of some sort. I said the last time, it's just that others were more dedicated than others. Others were less as fair, but they were still involved. They were still involved. Are you getting this now? So that you have no right to point fingers at anybody. Say you are coming from this state. You are coming from this. We hear that your people do this. You're, no, you don't have that right. That authority is not given to you. Because everybody was an idol worshiper of some sort. Are you getting my point? Abraham was an idol worshiper when God called him. What could he have worshipped? Only idols. And when God called him, Jake, all of the people, the, as from Abraham, that was when they started understanding the person called Jehovah. Are you getting me now? He revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and they continued with that revelation until the word became flesh. Praise God. Now, what does that mean? That tells you that our forefathers went to the gods that they only knew. And they, on our, see, in the village, they understand covenant very well. Are you getting my point? They go and meet these strange spirits through mediums, through priests. Is that true? And they say, okay, protect our land from war. It started during war. Because from Bible days till today, they've been fighting. People have always been fighting. So because of fear, the kings and elder statesmen went on behalf of territories. Are you getting me now? None of us here is from America. So you cannot pretend not to understand what I'm saying. Are you getting my point? Don't give me that face as if me, I was born, you were born in a plane, no problem. But when I finish this explanation, you will know that you must stay and deal with certain things and conquer it. Nazareth, where Jesus came, had a spirit that was manifesting. Nothing good comes out from there. Nathaniel testified that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus had to exempt himself. Are you, are you getting my point? Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, they went to these gods to seek protection, to seek prosperity, to seek fruitfulness. And all of this, this is what Satan wants. Satan always wants you to come to him. Declare your loyalty and then he will give you. See, that a man is rich does not mean it's God that gave the money. Satan makes people rich. Are you hearing me? Satan... Satan took Jesus to a mountain. He said, look at all of... He showed him the glory of the world in a span of time. He said, I will give you if you bow down. All Satan wants is the bowing down part. And our elders carried their heads on our behalf. We were in their loins. We all bowed our heads to these devils and idols. And they said, we agree. Protect our children's children. Because that's all they knew. Don't get angry at our fathers. To them, they felt it was the best thing they were doing. Are you getting my point? That's why when they came for war, you won't see barricade, but you enter a city, people will start slapping you till you go out. The protection, the altars were speaking. You get the point? You see a man moving, nobody's protecting him. You try to touch him. Somebody somewhere because the covenant speaks. Are you getting my point? Ratified by blood. And it is renewed periodically. Usually, annually. People go, and that's the whole idea of many of what we call traditional festivals. It doesn't matter if they call a pastor to say opening prayer. No. That's not, the whole idea is a 
what do I call it now? A, a revisiting of these altars. Please get this thing. We are talking of the laws of victory. You must understand this story. Now, down the line, many of our parents left the village and they came to, they had the privilege to go and study in universities. They went abroad, you know. They did a lot of things and the missionaries came. That's why when the missionaries came to Nigeria, they brought the gospel, but they died. The demon said, you are coming to save people. Now, they knew that Jesus was Lord, but many of them did not understand the principles of the kingdom. As soon as they entered the land, they said, you want to stop this and that and that. The next thing, malaria just caught the man. They sent drugs from America, from everywhere. The man still died. And the priest who is responsible will just come out. Do you know how people in the village live old? 101, 114, no glasses. Ha ha, I remember you. Is it died now? Die. The man won't die. In other words, I'm alive, I'm watching. Listen. You keep becoming an inconvenience to generations. Everybody must send you money. You started the trouble. The children grew, married, had their children. All kinds of things go on in the village. And the reason for all of this, listen. The reason for all of this is, I shared it the last time, transgenerational allegiance. Are you getting me? This is what Satan wants. What did I call it? Transgenerational allegiance. Where one generation will now say, we are the young people now. We are bowing to you. And you buy into that generation. So, before a child is giving birth to, they are already covenanted to all kinds of spirits. You, you just get up and come and meet somebody. I like this girl. Oh. Pray, you won't pray. Be born again, you won't be born again. You just come. The day you say, I like her in the night, you just see somebody, you say, be careful. The day you ever come near that lady, she's my wife or she's this, and you wake up in the morning, you say, ah, oh God, I won't do again, no. The kind of warning. Listen, many people think this thing is not real. Let me tell you this night, except you are pretending. This is what has happened to many people here. You know, the church is a place of we, 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 we allow suits like this to just make us lie over things. But tonight we're addressing issues. Some of you are going home after next week. This is the revelation you must take with this understanding. Some of you will be angry after today. And you say, so this is the mystery behind this lack of marriage in our family. Behind this, there are, there are cities that have what we call the cause of poverty. A professor will finish, retire, and go back to his village and be riding a bicycle. That's the covenant for, for violating this thing. There are many people like that. You see somebody who just leave London and say, I'm going back home. I, I like the village. Oh God, what are you looking for? Village that is room, 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 like shop. I like it. I'm still staying there. The person stays there until he dies. Education does not cast out demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Cologne and sure and smelling nice does not cast out demons. Good English does not cast out demons. I wish it did. Would have had less demons in our generation but they are still here. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus tonight it will break every chain break every chain break every chain it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing one more time with revelation from your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain. 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 Break every ch
chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Sing to break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's just sing it one more time. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Satan comes to find expression there must be something that he can hold on to number one is a covenant hear me listen a possibility exists that you can become a victim of a covenant although you were not there when it was enacted were you there when Jesus died did you see him on the cross and even if you go to Jerusalem and cry in front of a cross you didn't see him but by covenant he brought you into it and is as real as standing there to an extent that Paul can say I have been crucified don't lie to us Paul where were you this is the power of a covenant footballers score and they say we scored were you there you understand covenant so here says how the Bible puts it as for me and my house we will serve the Lord that means somebody can say, as for me and my house, we will serve this shrine. Is that true? Did they call everybody one by one to say, Benga, are you interested? He said, no. Lillian, are you interested? Somebody went on behalf of a nation and entered a covenant. This is the predicament of the nation of Africa. And the kind of gospels we are inheriting from America will not deliver us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not criticizing them. We salute them, but there's got to be more. This is Africa. A nation that God, a continent that God desires. The whole eyes of hell is upon Africa. They know, they know that saviors shall arise. This is a mountain. That's why there's multiplied mysterious sicknesses and the rest. I will show you, listen, I'm going to show you certain revelations. And you will see why some sicknesses cannot be cured medically, no matter how you try, because they were not sicknesses in the first place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is somebody getting angry tonight? So Satan must be free of whatever he can lay claim of in your life. Say covenant. Some of our parents, let's be honest, even went to an extent of inviting one baba. Tell the truth. Is that true? Some of you were small. You just saw somebody just come. They say, please give him a seat. Say, all right, everybody come. The next thing you saw something boiling, no fire. Ah, who are you? Say, just sit down. Turn your back or remove your clothes. This one for husband. This one for prosperity. This one for that. Listen, listen. Brothers and sisters, I want to, I can kneel down and beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you tell me that because you just said, I give my life to Jesus Christ, everything went. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Are you getting me? And I'm going to explain to you, that does not mean the Bible is, tells a lie when it says you are a new creation in Christ. I've taught you the structure of God's way of communicating. He speaks as though you have reached the end. It's not his fault. It's the way his nature is. He does not speak as if he's bounded by time. When he looked at Gideon, he said, Oh mighty man of value. How long did it take until he conquered before he walked in that experience? I'm not denying that the word of God says this about you. But brothers and sisters, it will take the experiential application of kingdom truths Otherwise, you will see it in the world, but you may never get it. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? I saw certain things at work in my father that I always wondered. I was always fighting with my father growing up. That's how some of you are. You just see that 
what is this resentment between your parents and you? It's almost as if you are rivals. You cannot explain. There is a story you do not know. This is what I'm explaining to you. It's a cry from altars. A man marries a wife. One day he gets up and just looks at her and everything about her irritates him. Everything irritates him. They go to counselors and they say, are you looking hot? You too, help yourself now. She says, okay, oh, go and buy the clothes. The day she's wearing, the man looks as if he didn't see anything. <laughs> you did this for me. Don't be stupid. Because these things are spiritual things. Some of us here, this is God answering your question right now. You, every time something good is about to come to your life, you say, okay, daddy, help me. There is a small competition. You find out that that spirit rises again. That's the day your father comes back angry. And he says, where, where did you say you are going? Lagos for where? You are not going anywhere. Some of you, it was when you started coming for koinonia that the war in your family started. You were minding your business for as long as you were not serving God, you were not serving, doing anything. You, one kind of resentment you cannot explain, brothers and sisters. When the Bible says kingdom shall rise against kingdom, your question should be which kingdom? There are kingdoms, there are thrones, there are dominions. They still speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why they are speaking? You have violated the terms of that covenant. Because according to the covenant, the fraternity continues. Now, based on the knowledge of the gospel, all right, that you have had, you are now saying, I'm not bowing down to anything. Your parents told you, we are not going to any village, we are not doing anything again. These altars, as far as they are concerned, they have been destined to come and protect your family. Now they come and you are saying, Jesus Christ is going to protect my family. They say, okay, we'll see. So their goal is to frustrate whatever is not them so that you will return. You see it? That's why when things get bad, they say, this one that this leg is swelling up, you, where did you go, sir? You say, I was sitting down. They say, oh yeah, go home. <laughs> when you go home, the elder laughs. He gives you word of knowledge as you are entering. He says, I knew you would come. What is he saying? I knew you would come. And when you come, he says, why are you pretending as if you were not born here? You went to London and it washed away what we are, your fathers have been doing. And you too, you kneel down and say, Kite, I'm suffering this contract. Let me just do it. Do you know what? Satan hits you at your greatest point of desperation because at that point you can do anything. He won't disturb you until you get to 30 years. And then you say, are you really ready to marry? And some of our mothers will say, see, oh, let me tell you the truth. There's one story. I didn't tell you because you were very young. Just go to the village and marry in peace. Many pastors come and think that it's your caller that drives demons. I must marry this girl. She say, I have a bad history. I must still marry you. <laughs> the demons say, marry. Are you ready to take this? Yes, please. Hurry up. You just marry and you marry something else. The ministry dies. Everything dies. The woman is not bad, but a covenant is speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Who wrote it? When? Where did, what did they use to write the handwriting? And the Bible says, ordinance that spoke against us. There are ordinances that speak against people. I saw certain traits in my father. I hated it. But as I grew, I started finding it manifest in me. And I seem to be helpless about it. When I caught this revelation, I flogged it out with destiny. You know that song? I'll never let you go. It's not the song. It's what he said before the song I want to quote. He says, there comes a time. That's not what I'm saying. You think I cannot sing it? He says, there comes a time. Is that not what he said? In a man's life, when you have to do what? Just like Jacob and say, I won't let you go. This must be this your night. Don't celebrate Christmas the way you have been doing. There is no reason to celebrate when you have not dealt with what Jesus Christ came to solve. Many of us pamper Satan in our lives. You are not angry enough. I promise you, if you treat Satan as a gentleman, you will die like a chicken. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is, the Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You must get angry and say, enough. Come on now. Enough. The day my younger sister was going to write exam years ago, she collapsed in the exam hall. 
What happened? Nothing. Brothers and sisters, covenants are powerful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of you, when you were not in Christ, you entered different kinds of covenants. I want to say something that will surprise you and I apologize. I'm not a law and a religious person, but I just need to put this because I'm talking about covenant. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to tell you something that will surprise you. Do you know sex is a covenant? Look at me, please. Huh? Like I said, I'm not reminding you of your past or anything. No, I'm just bringing it to help you understand. Everybody say soul tie. Say it. Say soul tie. Listen. It's not about sex, sleeping with somebody. That's not what Satan is after. There is a law in the spirit that whoever you sleep with, you are one in the spirit. You become one with that person. Are you getting me? I know Nigerian films paint it very nice. They just show a romantic lady coming with her chest open and one guy like a sheep to the slaughter coming. But let me tell you the word of God right now, this night. That Christianity that you say, oh, I will serve God, but forget God is, let me tell you, sex is a covenant. Are you getting my point? And the trouble is, many of us, because of certain things, maybe our past lives or whatever it is we got involved in all kinds of things and then when we got born again we just said okay everything is over this is the reason why you will see a bishop who once was sleeping around or doing something are you following me now or a pastor or a, he was in the world drinking and smoking and he just comes and he says he's born again when the guy says he's born again he's standing and he's preaching and one day that altar strikes bam and the person gets up. He's still a man of God. Though. The next thing, he's scouting around for ladies. This is what? This is the predicament many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through. Hallelujah. Covenants. Number two. What gives Satan access? We have to hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Have you gotten it? When, see, look at me. I'm one person who hates putting a law on people. When you impose laws on people, you make them religious. Give them the revelation behind it and they will comply accordingly. This is the mistake many parents are making. The moment the son gets to 13 years, they say, Samuel, come. They say, the day Hold your ears. The day I see any lady around you, that day, you will know I gave birth to you. And the guy said, what kind of embarrassment? You know, he's a teenager. He's feeling like he's a big boy. Ladies like him. See his mother falling his hand and embarrassing him. Hallelujah. And then they now preach. Don't sleep around. Don't smoke. So the person said, why? And they are not listening. Why? Because those who smoke, there is a name they give them. They are the big boys in the campuses. Why are you telling me not to smoke? Why are you telling me not to sleep around? If you explain the spiritual revelation, it will threaten you to obedience. You see it? If I ask you, sit down on this chair and remain there. After a while, you will be wary. I didn't tell you why you sat down. But if I tell you there is a lion outside, you are free to go. But this is the best position. Will you sit? Even if the seat is pinching you, will you stand up? Because now I've given you a revelation to sponsor your patience. This is the religious thing we do in church. We come and meet people. Don't do this as if they wanted to do it. You are seeing a lady jumping from man to man and she's crying. She came to you for counseling. Say, man of God, I've been sleeping with everybody. You, you now join and slept with her again. And she went to another person. This is what a lot of people do because it's not an issue of psychology. This is an issue of spirits. Oh, let's pray. Father, I now release you in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. And the demon said, let's go. <laughs> Go 
because it's not by grammar. Through the greatness of thy power, not your vocal composition, through the greatness of your power. You are going home. Listen, God is sending many of us as saviors. You are going back angry. Every time God wants to liberate a home, a family, he seeks for a man, an agent, an ambassador. I know that there are some of you who are already doing it. This thing is all, many of you right now, you are responsible. Do you know your prayer life is already, you are feeling the freedom already in the air, your family. It's just for some things to come in. And can I tell you, when it breaks, it has broken forever. For sure. This is the balance with deliverance. Many people make it look as if you should be in bondage when you are free. No, 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 no. When you are set free. For he who the son of man sets free is free indeed. But until then, you are in bondage indeed. Hallelujah. Goodness. Let's rush. So I've told you that, okay, covenant number two, yokes. Many of us don't know what a yoke is. A yoke is a self-imposed predicament. Self-imposed predicament by fraternizing with Satan. Personal self-imposed. Why self-imposed? Don't touch this. I yeah, must touch it and see what will happen. You touch it and your hand refuses to leave it. Yokes. Some of us, our stubbornness is what is responsible. The yokes on our lives are taller than us. The way we are standing like this. You are just standing alone. But the yokes that are on us. Because we are stubborn and rebellious to the ways of God. But tonight the Lord brings liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty. Liberty. Yokes. Hallelujah. Number three. Associations. Now, I know this one looks like a cool one. Wait till I finish explaining it. Associations. Look at me. Have you read the scripture that says what fellowship? Everybody say fellowship. Say koinonia. It didn't say what visitation. Are you getting me? So, I'm not saying you, you will walk with unbelievers. The Bible did not say what visitation. It says what fellowship, conscious fraternity with wrong people. Let me tell you something. People carry spirits and they carry presence. Jonah entered the boat. People, their whole life damaged. He came with something else. The ark came into the house of Obed-Edom. And within that small time, Jacob came in with a blessing from his father. And he caused Laban to prosper. Personalities have spiritual implication. Don't let anybody just come and hop in and out of your house in the name of solidarity with your village people. Send them away if they are not ready to listen to the principles of the kingdom. Because when Rachel went, she carried her gods. That's what the Bible tells us. When Rachel went, she carried her gods. Jacob, the husband, but Rachel carried her small gods. Everybody say associations. The Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness? And what communion, two words, same words, koinonia. What communion has light got to do with darkness? It says come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Now, many of you, look at me. Many of you have inherited all kinds of demonic things because of wrong and careless associations. And you say it does not matter. You have friends that all they watch is pornography. You go to their, their houses, they are watching hardcore pornography. But because of your solidarity to them. Are you seeing? Your solidarity. I don't want them to call me holy, holy. I don't want them to call me this. And you get there. You can't watch those kinds of things. And still be yourself. Because those things are transference of spirits. Are you getting me? You have a mind. You have a brain. It has memories. It can replay. It can fast forward. So you go and watch all kinds of junks. And you come back. 
and you are wondering why every time you see every lady you are feeling like sleeping with them something is wrong and you come for koinonia like this the water of the world washes you and you get up and go back there are many of us we we entered wrong relationships because of our friends they came together and say you sir don't fall our hand this guy has been disturbing us let me tell you straight to the point if you are not bold to make a stand for Jesus Christ, you may not arrive at your destination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight's teaching may be hard, but let me tell you, God is speaking to us here. Break free from, from wrong associations. Love is a command. Association is not. It's not a commandment. Some of you still have bad friends. Terrible associations. You have, a, you have somebody who came to your room. Listen to me. And the guy said, sorry, oh, I don't have accommodation. Let me stay in your room. He's staying in your room. You come back in the evening and you see that a lady, he brought a lady in your room and he just laughed. He said, bros, bros, go and take fresh air. Now I beg. And you are laughing. He I said, guy, you said, now I'll, 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 I'll come back after one hour. You see that? Associations creating an atmosphere. I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere. Beans cannot grow on this carpet. True or false? You can't just throw beans and expect it to grow like that because the atmosphere is not conducive. Let me tell you the truth. There are many of us that need to go and destroy things that we are associating ourselves with. He told Gideon, go and destroy those things. There are, there are some of us, I've said it, our parents are born again, but there's one demonic bow and arrow or one kind of thing. It was, I'm not saying everything is bad, but some things were dedicated. You know it. You carry it and keep it there. Am I blessing you? I love you too much not to tell you the truth because this is what is responsible for the downfall of many families. Hallelujah. Families, listen. Those of us who are parents here, listen. Please let us help our children. Some of, some families, even as, see, this is not the thing of young people. There are families that are associating with wrong people. They are the ones that carry your father and mother to one so-called prophet and they did every kind of satanic thing. Your parents were working fine until some wrong associations took them to somebody. They didn't tell you. They went and they entered the covenant on your behalf. Associations. You must get out of it. Get out of it quick. Many of us who like joining clubs, Rotary Club is nice, but others that don't have names, I-40, you say, I'm joining too. What do you know it is? They say, when we join, you come and touch the table three times and you go. You too, you now carry your big head. You go and touch it three times. You see, let me tell you, don't, the Bible says, do not be unaware, ignorant of the devil's devices. Is the word stratomai, his methodology. In the name of association, Many of us have joined every kind of satanic sites online. I'm a member. I'm a this. I'm a that. They send you one envelope something. They say, okay, put the handkerchief here. Many of us, is associations that have made us to go and collect all kinds of things. Love portion. I hear they do it in Zaria City. When you rub it, it will make the, the guy. What if the guy is now more powerful than you? You don't know that he must have a repercussion. This is what you don't know. There's no free lunch with Satan. You will first eat. When you finish, you will tell you the bill. And you must pay. You must pay. So, when you say they gave me this to make this guy, ladies, hear me. Anything God cannot do for you, let it not be done. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Husband can come from marine spirits. Hear me. Children can come from marine spirits. A lot of people, a lot of people are in error and derision. Gentlemen, look at me. Let me tell you something. If your quest for money makes you to join all kinds of demonic associations, it will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many clubs right now 
that are helping people to get money fast. When advent of, of everybody being a big boy, billionaire 23, millionaire 21, you too, you call me too, I must be before 28. Nothing is wrong with that. Except for the fact that when the quest for money becomes a desperate thing, they take you everywhere. They ask one wealthy man, they say, what is the secret of your prosperity? And he said something very scary. He didn't say, I read good business books. He said, I was in a certain place at a certain time. And in that certain place, there were other people like me. But I was the one who took the step they did not take. He said, that's the secret to his wealth. Will you follow that kind of person? What kind of scary description is that? You were at a certain place at a certain time. The fact that other people didn't join should tell you whatever they say they should do is scary. Sadiq Ibrahim, remember the gentleman that came here? They made him to sleep on a grave for three days. How many days? How many days? Many of us are willing to do it. He said three days is not better than 12 years. Do it. Do it. I remember Papa Akwami, they did. You remember one video we watched some years ago of one guy, one worry guy that used to be an armed robber. Eight years robbing people, nobody catches him. He won't run after when you are chasing him. You will just not see him. And what will happen to you will serve as a lesson. The next day you see him, you will leave him quietly. They can enter the bank. I mean it. They can. Ent- they don't rob 10,100, uh-uh, 10 million, 5 million, 100 million. And this guy himself, the covenant is see, There are many people, wealthy people who are under all kinds of covenants. Part of the agreement is you don't help your family members or you don't help yourself. They are your uncles. That's why you can be dying and they won't help you. They are not greedy. They are under oath. Are you getting me? That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. You see the sorrow part? That's what Satan cannot remove from your life. Mysterious livings. Your father just comes and says, all right, I'm going to have a personal room right now. Your mother says, after how many years? He said, you had me. Go and find another room. And the guy stays alone. You wake up in the night, you see him standing like this. Ah, daddy, what is this? Say, go out, go out, lock the door. <laughs> this man is sweating for hours. Why? He said, it must work. This destiny must move forward. Be careful. What you call moving forward may be the biggest retrogression in your life. Whatever God does not give me, let me not get it. I won't get anything in this life. I prophesy into your life. May you not get anything in this life that will take you to hell. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am saying this because Steve, right now, people are under pressure to prove to others they are successful. Every young man graduates and he wants to show that within one year, I bought a car, I bought this, and people are entering every kind of wrong, it's first associations that lead people into this thing. And they go and join some groups. They see a young man and say, you, how did you do it now? Now, how this one that you're... To an extent that many of our pastor people are already following it now. Are you seeing that? Because the price for laboring genuinely to get the true prosperity, the seasons of proving is very difficult and almost unbearable. So many people will prefer the shortcut and that's Satan's ministry to give you shortcut. Bow. You don't need to go to the cross. Just bow and take it now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 3.27. Let's hurry up. My spirit is fired up as I'm speaking because I know that this is what is responsible for the pain of many families. Many, many, many. This is the puzzle. Are you ready now? I want to share with you a powerful scripture. Everybody look up. How do you get out of these things? How do you get out of, how do you walk in the experiential victory? Number one, the Bible gives us another law. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then after he will plunder his house. So in every house, there is a strong man. And the Bible says you cannot, the, the, the barrier between you 
and the things you want to take is the presence of a strong man. The word strong there does not just, it means strong to the degree that your lack of knowledge permits him. Are you getting my point? You must get this key. I'm about to release a powerful key and we'll pray. It says you must first do what? Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. How do you bind the strong man? I will tell you. You don't bind the strong man by saying, strong man, I bind you. No. You bind the strong man through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. You bind the strong man through knowledge. And the application of that knowledge. First, before any prophetic utterance. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. One of the, mis the most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible. Matthew. Please let's look at it quickly. Shiba kapara kusata. Matthew 16, 19. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Stop. So before we talk about binding and losing, what do we talk about first? Keys. Replace the word keys with principles. Ready? One to read. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. It is by the application of those principles you bind and lose. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is what you must do that binds Satan. There is what you must do that loses your blessings. Many people just say, I bind, I bind, I lose. There is a place for prophetic communication. But before you talk of any prophetic communication, there must be a revelation, knowledge. Hallelujah. Very important. These keys are the keys of knowledge. I will give you the principles. This is what I'm sharing with you. Principles. When you know these things, you can keep Satan where he belongs. As a ministry, we know some principles. And our success is not, in, it's not magic. You can be prosperous by knowing these principles. And your confidence will not be the prosperity, the, but the principles you know. Because there are principles that will be applied again and again. If you get blessed without knowing why you got blessed and how the blessing came, you will be afraid to lose it. This is why many people are not givers. Because they are not sure it will come again. Revelation makes you a giver. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say it again, revelation. This is what we lack. Revelation. What are the principles? For instance, look at me. I want to tell you some principles very quickly. Every time you find out that every door around you is being closed, you are neglecting the law of honor, which is the principle for access. Are you seeing that? Honor is the key for access. When you dishonor people, there are doors close towards you. Honor. Everybody say honor. If you want to receive the blessing of a father or a mother, what happens? Honor. And they will bless you. So he told his son, he said, go and bring me venison so that I will be pleased and I will bless you. Are you getting my point? Another principle. The principle of open heaven is tithing. It's in your Bible. Tithing is not the key for money. I've said this thing again and again. Tithing is not the law for money. Tithing does more than money. Tithing is the scriptural principle for open heavens. So that whatever is done under that open heaven prospers. It is when you are a faithful tither, then this scripture becomes real. Whatsoever he doeth prospers because you are now if you give under a closed heaven you are wasting your time are you getting me there are many faithful givers who are not titers god is not just after money god is after a pattern he told moses he said ensure that you build according to pattern open heavens as a ministry by the grace of god we do not owe god one naira in tithe 
we have been faithful to the latter. I told the finance department, it doesn't matter what collection we are collecting for what. God's 10% goes not forcefully, cheerfully out of revelation. And you will live as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Honor brings you access. I shared with you my story. How that God instructed me to go to Canaan land. I've shared the story. And I carried a seed and I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. They were here. I remember, I remember that time. I told them. I woke up in the morning to go and ease myself. And the Lord told me immediately, you are going. Without question, without arguing. Many of us see delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. He said, Abraham rose up early in the morning. And when I rose up, I went there. I went to go and sow my seed. Honor gives access. And when that happens, I came out and I was going to enter the car for the driver to take me back to the airport. Let me return. And the Lord told me, come out of the car. He said, kneel down on this ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And he said, from today, from today, the cities open up to you. So somebody will be seeing our messages going around. You do not know that there are keys. You see that? That's why when you criticize a man who is blessed of God, whether you are right or wrong, God will first punish you before addressing the issue. Please, are you learning something? Prayer and fasting. Listen. Prayer and fasting is the key for a vibrant anointed spiritual life. There is, there is the place of the word, but let me tell you, prayer, there are many lazy believers around who have explained away prayer and fasting because it's hard. They just kick it away and they expect you will never forget about spiritual power if you are not committed to prayer and fasting. Except you want to go and do what a lot of people are doing. But I tell you, you want authentic power Prayer and fasting. I told you prayer and fasting. I know we say it solves many problems. But from my Bible, prayer and so fasting only solves one problem. Unbelief. It exposes the atmosphere of your spirit. And helps you to comprehend the reality of the person of God. In a way that you can believe him more truly. Are you seeing that? So these are many principles many principles many there are many more praise is one of the dramatic principles for the instant intervention of god you know what this praise that many people trivialize is it just dancing that no praise is a mighty tool for biblical spiritual warfare read your bible it was at the shout the healer all the instruments and the voices and the walls of Jericho, they didn't just fall down, they sank. Praise. Are you getting it now? Very powerful spiritual principle. Hmm. Tonight, the Lord is going to set many people free. And many of us in turn will carry an anointing through this revelation and go back and set a lot of people free. Next year, hopefully, we will still talk about certain things. Very quickly, let me just share this. There are three revelations you must have to be free from all of these things. Three revelations. Number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. You must is compulsory. You must realize that you are only establishing something whose victory has been declared. Everybody say the finished work of Christ. Say it, the finished work of Christ. Because I must balance the part that I've been telling you now. A lot of us have been trained to understand as if let's just fight and see who will win. Uh-uh. Your fight is a fight of faith. And the fight of faith is taking the arsenals of the kingdom and enforcing the victory. 
Are you getting me? Say after me, Jesus died and conquered Satan. Conquered principalities. Conquered powers. And he has given me the victory. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says we are seated with Christ. Please believe this. You are seated with Christ. You must function from that platform. Are you getting me? You must function from that realm of truth. Although you are sick, you must believe that you are seated with Christ. The devil will say, if you are really seated with Christ, why has it not happened? You are going to apply the kingdom principles now and it will get him out. But it does not negate the fact that you are seated. Say, I'm seated with Christ. Far above. Say, he has given me a name. I am a partaker of his anointing, of his spirit, of his authority. He said, all power, all authority has been given to me. And he said, as the father sent me with the same equipping, so send I you. I, I had a revelation. I had an understanding that brought me victory. He's saying, I send you with it. Go and do exploits with it. So number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. Number two, you must be diligent to apply the principles that cause the manifestation of whatever promise in scripture. You get the point? You must be diligent to apply. Every blessing in scripture has principles. It has your part that you will play. So it's not enough to say I've been seated with Christ. You must apply the principles. For you are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Just write it. We're out of time. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. You are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. When Satan cannot find anything of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final thing is to realize, please realize that God is with you. I know this looks like a very simple statement, but I wish it was that simple. Moses understood. He said, do not send us from here if your presence. They just came out from Egypt. And he knew that these gods will come after them until the presence of God drives them again. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my God. In your presence, that's where I I am seeking your face and touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, oh God, in your presence, oh God. Many of us will be delivered tonight once and for all. We cannot end this meeting. See, even if you have to go and set your family members free, you cannot set others free by being like them. You must first experience the liberty of the spirit. This is a very serious moment. Hallelujah. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance. Please rise up on your feet. Give this moment every seriousness. Give this moment every seriousness. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. Please sing this song from the depth of your heart. I won't go back. Say, Lord, I'm not going back the way I came to the way it used to be before your presence. 
more time. I will go back. I will go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. Before your presence came and changed. One more time. I will go back. I will go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. Before your presence came and changed me. Hallelujah. Tonight's deliverance will be in this order. Number one, we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. Hallelujah. Let the devil know you mean business tonight. Instrumentalist, you walk with me. Hallelujah. After you pray in tongues, we are going to pray. The devil that will not let you go this night has not yet come into existence. Are you hearing me? You will shake off these shackles once and for all. Are you ready now? Go ahead and pray. Instrumentalist, go ahead. Please pray. This is the last teaching service for the year. You cannot. You can't go back the way you came. So go to Pekete, pray on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your loved ones. There's victory here tonight at a platter of gold. Enough is enough. Shackles of poverty, shackles of failure. Pray, pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of victory. Your long awaited victory is here at last. Here at last. In this last teaching service of the year. Say, Lord, I'm tired. Rota papa kata prekete le baba baba. Rekete lekete prakata bala 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 bala. Rekata prakata bala bala bala. Do it for the sake of your generation. Do it for the sake of your children. Do it. Pray. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. Do it for the sake of your children. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of the parents. Rekata tabakata balalalalalalala. Ekerelelelelemos shokoto pokata ba. Don't say it does not concern me. Be humble enough tonight. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't say it does not concern me. Be the savior that will arise from Zion. Rescue the perishing. Be that agent of change tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told the Lord, I said, Lord. I don't just want to teach this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hear me, brothers and sisters. This is the explanation to many mystical things that are happening in our families. This is the explanation. There is a devil out there. And tonight, if you will only stand, you will be that savior. Please tonight, if it's for the sake of your loved ones, Say, Lord, so this is why you brought me. I will pay any price to get out of it. Sister, this is the mystery behind your late marriage. This is the mystery behind the barrenness. This is the mystery behind untold hardships. 
many families are going through untold hardships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray in one or two minutes. See, let me tell you, the way some of you are praying, let me tell you straight to the point, you are not serious. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying pray till you shout the roof, but some of us are just standing and strolling around. We are not playing games here, believe me. This is for the sake of your destiny. We are here to help you. But like a hospital, no matter how we try to help you, you must cooperate. Me, I'm angry. I've been praying this. Are you getting me? You must experience this liberty. Some of you have been trusting God for job since you graduated. All you think is that hard? Let the devil live and see if the door will not open. Listen, hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. See, listen. You're going to pray. Right now, before I pray for you, see. Look up. The Bible says, He that conceals his sin shall not prosper. I'm not just talking. There are things you know are happening in your life and your family. I'm not doubting the fact that you're a man of God. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray. Are you getting me? There are some of us is lost. There are some of us, whatever it is, you know that some of us is the cause of poverty. It's on our families and it's on our, everybody went to school, but they are living as if nobody has seen the four walls of a university. Let me tell you, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if this is all we do tonight and you receive your liberty, this is pre miracle service. Are you getting me? I'm just doing my job to help you here tonight. But brothers, I want you to pray. Are you listening to me? In the next five minutes, you're going to mention those limitations in your family and say, Lord, tonight, this night, right now, lift your voice and pray. Lord, the wickedness in my family must stop. Pray it. Lord, the hatred in my family must stop. The unfaithfulness in my family must stop. Pray it. The unfruitfulness. Please pray. Whatever makes doors to close when it gets to my door, it must stop tonight. Doors of marital delay, they must be open. Pray. Whatever is responsible for my ministry not flourishing, pray, pray, pray. Ministry is not that hard. If you are struggling, something is wrong. Pray for your finances. Pray. Please pray. Mothers pray. Fathers pray. Pray. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. This is business tonight. Confront gates. Confront gates. Confront gates. It shall come to pass. The body shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke can be broken. The covenant can be broken. The cause can be broken. Jesus paid the price already. Our job is to enforce it. For the sake of your destiny, for the sake of your children, break some circles. Break some circles. Enough is enough. Break some circles. Break 
break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. Every covenant or every ordinance, Lord, that is speaking over my life, whether I know it or not, every covenant that has come tonight, I confront it willingly, consciously. Lift your voice. I break it. Every covenant, every spell, every enchantment. Pray. Every covenant, oh God, Jesus died already. I break it from my life. I break it, oh God. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it. Every covenant that brings loss, that brings failure, that brings hardship, that brings delay, I break it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I like the spirit in this place. Hallelujah. One more prayer point before I minister to us. One more prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, wherever I have given the devil legal access, let the blood speak. Are you getting me? Whether it's my mistake, whether it's my carelessness, let the blood speak. Pray. Let the blood speak. The blood can speak above every other blood. There's blood speaking in your village, but there is the blood of the Son of the Living God. It has a voice. It speaks mercy. It speaks freedom. It speaks liberty. Let the blood speak. I plead the blood over my failures. I plead the blood over my mistakes. Pray. I plead the blood over my carelessness. Pray. Whatever gives Satan legal access in my life and my family. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Higher. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Tonight is your night of liberty. Let the blood speak. Satan cometh unto me and does not find anything of himself let the blood speak against altars against yokes against covenants the mystery of the blood is the one last card that Satan cannot resist Hallelujah. 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 I'm ready to pray for you. See, some of you will be shocked tonight. Be, I know I, I, I prayed for people for, de, for deliverance and the rest. Many of you will be surprised tonight. We have a few minutes, but we want it to be thorough. This one is not for your family. This one is for yourself. If you don't believe it, no problem. We are not offended. But for those who know that tonight must be this night.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Tonight we are going to pray. I cannot tell you the things I have seen from the time we began to pray. Brothers and sisters, there are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking. Some of us, you know what I'm saying. But tonight, I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. This is what I hear in my spirit. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Father, whoever is delivered tonight, we put a barricade. It must be complete deliverance tonight. Deliverance with proofs that they will see in their lives. And my God, I pray that no one spirit will survive the fire that is about to be released in this building. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Take this moment very, very serious. I need all the instruments and everything that can come in. Hallelujah. Drummer, follow them. I need the symbols. I'm going to pray. I see altars. See Tonight is going to be a ministration of fire. Many of you don't even know what fire. Fire is not just for falling down. Hear me. Fire is a mystery. It's the manifestation of the spirit that separates, that prunes, that delivers. I'm going to pray. Don't, don't worry about how many times you are falling. Tonight, it will happen for real. Because you have prayed it and because you are tired and because God has commanded it. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. Once that happens, Steve, play. Everybody play. Hallelujah. It's fire tonight. It will catch some of you. It will burn that chaff. Many of you will hear stories. Hear me? We don't kill people. But I tell you, some people will have to give way this night for your destiny to be open. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I don't care what needs to be happened. What needs to happen tonight? The door of your destiny must open. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, because of your anointing. Let it break yokes. Let curses and yokes be broken. At the count of three. Are you ready now? Please shout it from the depth of your heart. One. Two. Three. Out. 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 Right now. I set altars on fire. I set altars fire. 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 Let the fire consume every altar. Let the fire consume every spell, every enchantment. Bring them out. Bring them out. I set it on fire now. I set it on fire. I command judgment. 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 Let the right hand of God be stretched right now over your life.
Lift your hands, please. We have to hurry up. We're out of time. Please lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray. It's a dangerous prayer. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous prayer. You just keep your hands lifted. I'm flowing as the Holy Ghost is. There are some of you here. I'm seeing you tied. This is what I'm seeing. Those people will be released right now. I'm seeing you tied. No, just, just keep your hands. At the count of three, the power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing them tied. This is what I see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, anyone tied here, be released. One, two, get ready now. Three, receive it now. Receive it now. Be released. I release you now, 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 now. There are people tied. I release them. Be released now. 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 I command judgment. Whoever has tied you and tied your destiny. This night, I release the fire of judgment upon them. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. We just have a few minutes. But lift your hands. God is delivering people from anger. Hear me? Anger. This thing called anger. When I pray for you, you will know it's a spirit and it's not normal. Hallelujah. Anger. Anger. Many ladies will be involved in this. Hallelujah. At the count of three, all I want you to shout is the name Jesus. Follow me, drummer. Hallelujah. Anger is a spirit. It's a wicked spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, my God, anyone under any influence of the spirit of anger, at the count of three, it will leave them forever. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Every spirit. Go, 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 go. God has not given us that spirit out of them. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them right now. Come out of them right now. Anger goes from your life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands quickly. We want to pray against the spirit of fear. Many of you cannot take bold steps. You are afraid of everything. You are afraid of failure. You are afraid of success. You are afraid of marriage. You are afraid to take steps. You are afraid of starting a business. What if I fail? That spirit must leave you this night. Lift your hands. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Are you ready now? Lord, at the count of three, as they shout that name, Jesus, I command fear. Fear is a dangerous spirit. It must leave you right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Fear, go. 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 I 
command fear everywhere. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Go, go. Come out of God's people right now. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I cast it now. Hallelujah. Listen. Now I'm going to pray against the spirit of disobedience, non compliance. Man, this spirit must lead you to obey the principles of God. Are you hearing me? And I believe this should concern everybody. You should say, Lord, whatever makes me to find it hard to obey the principles of the kingdom, it must leave. Lift up your hands. Complete, prompt, Obedience. The Bible says his laws are not burdensome. Hallelujah. Shout this at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. I'm going to count five. At the count of five, I want you to shout it at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. And Lord, let every spirit that sponsors disobedience, rebellion, and hardness of heart, let it leave your people right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three, four, five. Every spirit of disobedience, go, 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 go now, now. Spirit of rebellion. I curse you, I curse you, I curse you, I curse you, spirit of disobedience, I curse you, I curse you, I curse you. I prophesy over your life. From today, in the name of Jesus, release this lady right now. I see you already in the spirit. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Out. Out right now. On your mark, get set, go, 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 go. Out. Out of her. On your mark, get set, out you go. Look, don't waste our time. Go, go, please. No manifestation. Go out now. Now. I forbid every useless manifestation. We're out of time. Just go. Now. Leave her. Leave her. Look at me, Usher. Walk with me. I said, leave her. Go. See, do you know why I say you should leave her? I'm, I'm, I'm flowing under a heavy unction. Just leave her. Let's continue what we're doing. Hallelujah. Prophecy does not reveal. It creates. Have you not left her? Where did she go to? On your knees and out of her now. On your knees and out. Quickly, don't waste our time. I gave an instruction on your knees and out. Many of you think it's out. 
That's how some of you get deceived. You say, thank you, Jesus. On your knees and out. Please listen. I pray right now. to speak over your life right now in the name that is above all names every voice right now that is contrary to Christ in your life right now let it be silenced forever in the name of Jesus let it be silenced now in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Every altar that speaks against you, I set it on fire now. I set it on fire now. Whoever is responsible for the predicaments in your life, I judge them this night. Every spirit that is responsible for poverty and failure, in the mighty name of Jesus, be free from it now. 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 Any other thing that ties you down, whatsoever it is, both for yourself and your family members, be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. In place of that cause, I put a blessing upon your life. Blessed beyond the cause. Blessed beyond any covenant. I bless you. Many of you don't know what I'm doing. Just receive. I put a blessing on your life. I put a blessing on your life. Let it create a garden of Eden. Everywhere you go. I turn things around. For your favor. I release favor. I release blessings. You are free. You are free. I declare you free. Therefore, whatever has not been working in your life, I command it to begin to work now. I command it to begin to work now. Whatever should have come into your life and is still pending, whether your life partner, whether your job, I pray that from now, to next miracles, this miracle service, within these seven days, may God do something that will surprise you. I said, may my God do something that will surprise you. The miracle is for the believer. The miracle is for the believer. Lord, in seven days, change the stories of men. In seven days, transform people in a dramatic way. May they return on Friday with fearful testimonies. Hallelujah. You've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not making any long discussion. I'm going to invite you to come. Please listen, this is a very solemn moment. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing and you know that you, meet, you need to make it right with Jesus. Wherever you are. Whether inside or outside. Your salvation is the number one step. To your total and complete liberty. And right now as we begin to celebrate them. You've never made a decision for Jesus. Or you are rededicating your life. Please leave your seat and come out right now. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing.
Let's celebrate them. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't sit back. This is the moment of salvation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wait for you. Koinonia, keep clapping for them. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. There are still more people coming. Don't sit back. Don't let the devil keep you. Forward ever. Backward never. The devil will never take charge of your life. Jesus gives you a new beginning tonight. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. There are people coming from outside. Keep coming. We don't care how bad it is. Just keep coming to Jesus Christ. For as many who will come, he will in no wise despise. Come. Keep coming. God bless you. It will break you free. Hallelujah. These three boys, you people smoke. You smoke all kinds of things, but you'll be delivered today. As you were coming, I saw it. They smoke this thing. These funny things, three of them. They are making a bold decision for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, thank you for this bold decision. Is that you? Come and give me a big hug. I'm happy to see you safe. Give me a very big hug. Bless you. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is a very deep and serious confession. Okay? Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I'm a child of God. The nature of sin leaves me. And I receive the life of Christ. My name is in the book of life. And I receive grace to live a life of holiness and righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father for these ones you brought them by your power to preserve them I thank you because you set them free from every chain and shackle of Satan I break that addiction I break that addiction I break that addiction that addiction, it will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. It will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Thank you for making this bold decision. Please just follow the ushers. They will have your details. Just turn. Where are the ushers? Direct them. There's somebody directing you. Just turn around and they will have your details in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.